called a meeting for Monday, June 8th for the Village Trustees to order. And Evan, take it away. Thank you. Uh, this is the first meeting after the uh, budget election and the election. Uh, therefore, it is your reorganization meeting. Uh, our first order of business is to accept a motion to nominate someone for the position of Village President. What I will do, I will seek a second and then I will ask if there are any other persons wishing to nominate. And we'll go through a process. So, first order, motion. Can I have a motion to nominate someone from your midst um, for the position of village president? Sound like it. Uh, um, I will nominate Andrew Brown as president. I'm George. I will second. I am Raj. Is uh, thank you. Uh, so Andrew Brown is nominated by George Tyler and seconded by Raj Chawla. Is there anyone else who wants to make a nomination? You won't hurt my feelings. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, this is your last chance. You know, <laughs> Andrew, stop pleading. I am humbled and appreciative. All right. Going once. Going twice. Three times. Okay, I have a nomination and a second. All those in favor of Andrew Brown being uh, elected village president say aye. 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 Any nays? Mr. Brown, you are the village president. Trustees, thank you. Thank you, trustees. I greatly appreciate it. I, I think. This has <laughs> certainly been an eye-opening year, to say the least, um, <laughs> and a, a significant learning process. So I, I appreciate it. And George, again, I continue to thank you for uh, for helping along the way. No problem. So at this point, we now need a uh, a motion for for the village vice president. Um, I will go ahead and I will nominate George Tyler for vice president. Second. Are there other nominations? Well, I don't have another nomination, but I would be really uh, not totally okay if uh, uh, Dan, Karen, or Amber, or Raj wanted to give it a shot and run a few meetings. Anyone? Dan's done it before. He'd be great. Um, Amber or Raj, any interest? Uh, honestly, guys. No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Maybe next year, George. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have no nominations. All right. So seeing that there are no other nominations, there is a, a motion and a second. All those in favor of George Tyler for Village Vice President, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So I passed unanimously. Aye. Thank you so much. And there goes my dog. That was someone's dog. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute myself there for a few moments. <laughs> uh, so we are now on to agenda. Uh, George, uh, literally looking forward to having you as vice president again. Again, I appreciate all that you've, you've helped out with thus far. No, no problem. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Appreciate the nomination. And so now we will go ahead on to agenda issues and changes. Nothing from staff. Great. Uh, my dog was just checking to make sure if that was true. Uh, so seeing that there are nothing for agenda additions or changes, no need to approve the agenda. Uh, that will go ahead and bring us to the public to be heard. So this is the, por uh, the portion of the village trustee meeting where if somebody uh, from the public would like to speak to the village trustees on something that is not on the agenda, now is the time to do so. And just again, to make sure there is all uh, the clarity is there. This has nothing to do with the joint meeting. This is only for the village trustees. Um, so if you have something you'd like to speak to us about, uh, I will wait about 30 or so seconds. And if I don't see any hands in the comment bar or comments in the comments bar, or somebody doesn't start talking um, after the 30 seconds, then we will just continue on. Your time starts now.
Okay, I believe that has been 30 seconds. So hearing no public to be heard about uh, some, nothing on the agenda, we will go ahead and move on to item 6A about the bid process to design and construct a park at one main street. And I believe we have Robin joining us. Yep. Robin, do you want to go ahead and uh, just introduce this for us? If there's anything beyond the, the memo? Robin, are you there? Oh, I'm speaking not. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah, I was Take talking to myself. I do that a lot. So, um, <laughs> anyway, initially we were in discussions with the Vermont um, Nursery and Landscape Association. Uh, they do, uh, every second year, they do the Vermont Flower Show at uh, CVE. It's canceled. Um, it's not just a front door for all of their members, but it also um, garners them some funds, which they use for educational purposes for their members in the intervening years. Then we discussed and we thought maybe it should just go to bid. Um, the notion of budget was 50000 because that's what they make uh, every two years. So I thought it might be a good partnership because they're out that 50,000, which means they can't afford the educational um, component for their members. And we would get a design and installation from the professional group of nurserymen and landscape designers. Um, and logs. I, I talked to Evan and Evan said it'd be nice if they do a charrette, which I had not raised. They said they'd be happy to do a charrette. Um, I should say that my initial sketch it was that. It was something that was needed for the Brella program. It wasn't an attempt at a design. I hope I'm a little bit better than that. But um, they also said they'd be happy to do a charrette. The thing is that we need a design before the corrective action plan can be done because they have to calculate the amount of soil that's removed, et cetera, et cetera. So they need to know, you know, for instance, in this drawing, thanks, Greg. Um, each tree would have three cubic feet of soil removed okay. um, to get the, the, you know, the roots of the tree in. The idea, you know, I did send Andrew um, a link. I think Evan might have seen it. I just Googled successful urban parks in America or something. And the three components that were consistent every single time, trees, pavers, and water. And the thing about a contaminated site is, when you put the pavers down, underneath the pavers, it's got this red membrane that says, do not dig. And it's a way of capping what's down there. And um, that reduces dramatically the cost um, of the design and the installation. So that's where we are at the minute. And um, we're just wondering what's the best way to move forward. Thank you, Robin. Um, a couple points for clarification, if I may. Uh, what is the due date for this grant? Or this well, we've already been accepted into the Barella program. Um, there's an environmental engineer. Generally, an engineer will do a drawing. But as I'm a registered landscape architect, he and the people at the Department of Economic Conservation and the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission have agreed that I can do the drawing. So as we had no budget for a drawing, that means that we don't have to add anything to the budget. And, and the sooner the better. Uh, the, the Department of Environmental Conservation have allocated $10,400 for the environmental consultant to do the corrective action plan, which generally speaking is known as the CAP, which is um, a play on words here because we're going to try and cap uh, the contaminated soils. Okay. Um, in an earlier email about this, Robin, uh, one of my points of concern was that, I, from what I thought I was reading, is that when a plan is submitted, any deviations from the plan has to be approved or has to receive prior written approval from uh, from the state. Yeah, that, that would be the different. plan after the charrette, not this plan. This plan was to get the ball rolling. They let the state see what might happen there, and the charrette would 
produce the plan that would then go to the environmental consultant to do the cap, not this one. So you can confirm that if, if the plan that comes out from the Shireps, once we get some public input on this, if it looks nothing like this current plan, if there are, say, nothing but trees, um, that that will be okay. If there's no fountain, that that's okay. If instead of pavers, you see nothing but grass, that that would well, be okay. We design it. Um, then they tell us what we have to do to comply with the corrective action plan. So probably the difference in costs could be six figures, but I'm not sure they'd consider grass safe because people can dig in grass and then they get down to what's below. Yeah. But um But so my my question though is but my question though is can there be a change and a significant change from this? Or do yes. we have to go with the uh three square feet of soil per tree with however many trees there are and then that is the plan. My concern comes down to this needs to be a public process to have some public input on it. And that's what I want to make sure happens, and that the public process not just be a hey, we have to have a park that has twelve trees and the rest of it is Covered by pavers. Was it 12 trees, sir? I didn't even count them. No, um, no, I think the charrette is the final say. And then, depending on what the cost of that would be, you know, it's, 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 um, Brilla is, um, a protection plan. Mm -hmm. It's not an open bank account. So, um, There, there may or may not be some cost. And the, the whole idea of the pavers and doesn't matter what the formation is, what they look like. The whole idea is we will need to scrape off six inches, put gravel down, put the pavers in, and be at the same level as the sidewalk. So that was a minimal and in, invasive um, component to the design. And that's, that's what drove it. It wasn't, this is what it should look like. Okay. Uh, Raj, I think I saw your hand up before. Um, well, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. I guess I'm wondering, Robin, if like what kind, what factors, what are they taking into account when they review the plan? Are they simply saying, um, are they are they just making sure that the uh, contaminants are secure, essentially, and that and that anything that is in the in the uh, park plan won't won't disturb them in perpetuity, that kind of thing? Or are they? Yes, are they and they're also looking at to see how much contaminated soil will be removed. Okay. And one of the reasons the fountain is is where it is, is because that's over the concrete foundation for the old gas pumps. So we could raise the fountain up and build it over the gas pump. That way we wouldn't have to dig all that concrete up. That gets very expensive. That's where the most contamination is. That's my understanding. And how deep is that down? My concern is that we have a fountain just to the <clears throat> just across the street from it too. So is it is it are there other options for that space? Or are you saying the depth sure, just we could we could build something else. Okay. We, we could have a sculpture there. I mean we could do lots of different things there. Okay. It's All just right. that that's got a very good southern aspect and fountains look really good when the sun hits them. Yep. George, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I, I do want to raise the point, and I've raised this before um, in, in our email conversations. It, it the the village municipal plan, which is our formal policy, the conceptual plan for the center, um, based on a charrette that was done part, um, you know, after with Heart and Soul and then after Heart and Soul, the design five corners, it calls for us to have a pocket park there. It doesn't obviously it's conceptual. It doesn't say exactly what it's going to look like, but I just wanted to bring that up. It's not like it's it's a I, I sort of use the example of the Main Street Bridge when we replaced it. We we didn't we didn't put in a suspension bridge. We didn't put in a covered bridge. We knew basically what had to go in there. It wasn't like the sky's the limit. And I, I just want to make the point that we have a pretty good idea based on public input already that we want to see some kind of a green space pocket park there. I would only add that I think the logic. I think we could set some parameters, and we probably should. I think if we said we're going to put grass there. It would probably radically change the price because you would have to probably uh, mediate the soil and you'd make it much more expensive. And in a place where you're going to be inviting hundreds and hundreds of people to walk by every day, that corner gets huge foot traffic. I, I don't know why we would want to put grass in there. So I, 
I don't think there would be any problem with us putting some limitations on what is going to go there. Um, I think the idea of capping it with some kind of a membrane and putting pavers on top, that's going to save us the cost of all the environmental mediation. I think we should say that that's a that's non-negotiable. Something like that has to happen. Doesn't necess We're not saying what the pavers have to look like and exactly the design, but I think we don't, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I don't want to see some, I think it's okay for us to put some limitations on what can happen in that space. I, I also would say suggest that if there's going to be a fountain there, obviously it would have to be a fountain that can exist without water lines and drainage. I, I don't know. I mean, it would have to just be like basically a, a giant bird bath. Okay. I don't think you could really put in plumbing. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that would be really expensive. Thank you, George. Any other trustees? Doesn't sound like there are. Um, so again, my only concern was to make sure that uh, this plan can change and that frankly, we don't need to just have this. Um, so Robin, uh, it, I heard you say you believe that that's possible. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, I've said we may want to do a charrette and what comes out of that may be different from this. Um, so I'm trying to put them in a, in a holding position. That it, I've had con confirmed that there's 10,400 and change. It's going to go to the environmental engineer once there's a plan that the village says this is our plan. Yeah, that, that sounds great. And as long as the plan can change, then I will certainly be fine with the motion as uh, or the recommendation as it's provided. And Raj, I think you have your hand up. Yeah, just a quick question, Robin. I don't remember what you if you'd said this earlier or not, so I apologize. But um, has the association agreed to do this work, or have you not approached um, them with the final? Well, they're very happy because, as they only do the floor show once every two years, their only source of income for education for their visitors, which are, you know, they're from Enosburg Falls on the Saxon River, is the money they get from the floor show. Absent the money from the floor show, no education. All right, so they're good with it. All right. It's a big deal for them, actually. I mean, they're under severe um, economic pressure. Okay. I like this idea. Greg, I think I see your hand up. Yeah, you'll see in the, the memo, um, staff does recommend this goes out to bid. Um, I know Robin talked about uh, to the NLA, and they're certainly um, viable bidders, but for our purchasing policy, this is the type of project that should go out and see what other, um, see what other uh, responses we get as well. And make a motion if we're ready. Well, I, I wait a second. I, I, I think we've made we've made exceptions multiple times in the past in our bidding policy. If there's just one provider or there's some special circumstance, I mean, I, I am just concerned that you know we, we have the opportunity to benefit a va a valued nonprofit Vermont organization. Um, what we could get, and they want the money. What what we could get for fifty thousand dollars from. Um, uh, some private company I'd be concerned about. So I, I, you know, I just don't want to see this. It's one thing to say bid, but I don't want to see it held up for like six months while we go through some complex bid process, knowing all along that we're going to wind up with, you know, no one's going to come close to what the uh, Vermont Landscape Association can provide us. So I, you know, I'd like to say, can't we, in this case, as we've done frequently in the past, make an exception? I mean, maybe do a cursory look, but I, I just, I, I guess my point is, I, I don't, I, I'd hate to know, have September roll around and we say what's going on with the park and, you know, we're still, we're still in the starting blocks. I, I'd like to see some progress made and, and this sounds like a good plan. My, my thoughts there. Dan, I think I see your hand up. Yeah, just curious, um, as far as George, you're saying you want to get a, you know, bid from somebody to do it. If we're going to have the charrette, isn't it kind of putting the um, cart before the horse? I mean, shouldn't we have the charrette before we get a bid? Because depending on what the the input we get from the charrette or we get a consensus on how we want it to be designed, that will impact the cost of the project, correct? Uh, can I respond? Go right ahead. 
I, I think the idea is that you'd have a charrette, but the charrette, the, the, going into it, they, they would know what their budget is. And so if someone just, for example, says, hey, we want to put a marble fountain in there for $100,000, they would say, yes, that's not possible. Here's the budget. Here are the kinds of things that are possible within the budget, the budgetary constraints. And they would be presumably professionals, and they would know what can and can't happen. So um, I, I, that's my understanding of how this would how this would work. Um, it wouldn't again. It wouldn't be a sky's the limit. It, it's as I said. I think there are constraints about what can and can't happen in that space, and mm -hmm. it's not like any just whatever the public wants that we're going to do. And if it costs a million dollars, well then so be it. I think we're saying fifty thousand dollars. Maybe we can go a little bit over that, but fifty thousand dollars is approximately we, we what we want to spend there. I also wonder about how, uh, so the organization um, that was proposed here is also a nonprofit. Uh, and so is there a way where, um, is this necessarily a contract or is this something slightly different in terms of a, a donation? Um, but uh, I wonder if this is a kind of, I'm looking at the clock, we have eight minutes um, and I, had said before that we would keep this to 30 minutes so that we don't interfere with the merger conversation. Um, we can either make the motion as it is. Um, we can ask for staff to give us some additional thought on this and come back when we meet again tomorrow and make a final decision. Um, or we can just take out the, uh, the bid process and waive it. Um, what's the preference? Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we take out the bid process. Would someone like to second that motion? I'll second it. Hey, okay, Dan. Um, Greg, I don't have that policy in front of me. Uh, what does it take to waive it? I don't recall. I so admit I don't have the purchasing policy uh, memorized, but Sarah's on my uh, I'm hoping I have a better understanding. I believe it's anything over $40,000 to be waived by the board. So it's Sarah. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes. Awesome technology. So the purchasing policy requires that anything over $40,000 go through the sealed bid process and things under that um, between the 10,000 and 40,000 go through a get three quotes process. Often we waive the purchasing policy bid requirement where there's something that's sole source. So like the vector, we can't you know, there aren't a lot of people that make the Super Sucker 5000. Right. Um, I, I do, I don't feel comfortable just, you know, I think it would do us well to just get an idea of other companies, local companies, maybe local nonprofits that do this kind of work as well. For, for a $50,000 price tag, I think it's important that we um, at least look around as well. I, I, that's my opinion. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. So we do have a motion on the table. It has been seconded. Um, shall we go forward with the, the motion as it is? Well, I think we have to. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just give a little bit more discussion. I, I you know, again, the you're you're talking I don't know who you're going to go look around for I'm trying to understand what that means to go look around for private companies that are going to design something and hold a public charrette um, you know it, it how long is that going to take and what's the ultimate benefit is it is there really a benefit there or are we just um, just sort of being a little bit slavish to a process that isn't really important here. I mean, I think this sounds like in a time of need when the Vermont Landscape Association, uh, normally they come here and hold a flower show and they get $50,000. It sounds like uh, a really nice partnership. And years from now to say the park was designed by the Vermont Landscape Association to me has a certain cachet. So I, I stick with my motion to waive the bid process. 
Robin, if I can ask you a quick question, do you think that you have the time to explore two local um, uh, landscape architecture companies to see if they could do this work, uh, that design within that amount of money by the end, uh, before a meeting tomorrow? <laughs> I could call them up, I'll tell you this much. To do a charrette and do the landscape design, yeah, might be 10, might be 15. But they're not going to do the installation. The, the one thing about this group is they provide plants pro bono for the flower show. And they put in, you know, there's one guy who's on the, the, the board, Gabe Bushy. He does the stonework and he'll put in fountain work and stuff and so on. And they'll work for nearly a year to get it ready for that. So they're already doing pro bono for the flower show. Or it is a front of house for them. So they get jobs, you know, they're, I don't, there's maybe 60 exhibitors and they all get work from people coming to the flower show and then they make the money for the flower show. So it's a double for them. Um, their thought was, you know, the 50, they get to 50 to keep their education going and the, the energy and the products they put into the flower show, they could put into the pocket. Pot. But so this could also be used for an educational purpose, you're saying? <clears throat> yes. So I'm hearing it's not only landscape design, it's not only a charrette, it's not only the materials, the labor to do the work, it is also a chance to educate other landscape construction organizations? Yes. So that sounds fairly unique to me. Um, that doesn't sound like something that I have seen or heard other uh, landscape construction companies do. Um, yeah. So I'm, that's where I'm at. Held to weigh in just one more quick time. Mm -hmm. I think all of that would come through very clearly on a bid or a quote process. Um, and I think that, you know, if in fact this company is, or this organization is gonna do a lot of this work for free, that'll be so clear right off the bat. And then we'll have three organizations, two or three, that right in front of us and we say, look, and all the reasons why we thought we should go with them in the first place, they were the right reasons. Um, but we did it the right way. I'm that, I just want that to be very clear that that's my position on this issue. Thank you. Um, if we delay this until our next meeting, that's two weeks. Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. We do have a motion and a second. So if we pass the motion, it goes, if we, if the motion fails, um, then could someone take the, uh, then we could make a motion to um, have bids done uh, for our next meeting. Yes. So that's the way that I see it. So the motion on the table is to waive the bid process. Um, all those in favor of that motion, or is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, go ahead and signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. 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 Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if it's not unanimous, we have to do roll call. That is correct. Okay, so uh, all of those in favor? George, or I'm sorry, George? Aye. Uh, Raj? Nay. Amber? Nay. Dan? Dan? <laughs> Dan, are you there? <laughs> Aye. Okay. Uh, I'm nay, so that motion failed uh, three to two. Um, so do we need a second motion or do you have what you need to move forward for our next meeting? We prefer a motion. I would make a motion uh, that the trustees uh, authorize the community development director to seek bids to provide a charrette, a design, and all labor and materials to construct a new public park for $2,000 and to bring it to our next meeting. Second. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Yeah, I, I just really can't emphasize enough the timing of this. We have opportunities for funding that could dissolve in order to be, to be, to be slaves to an administrative process that I think we all know is probably going to be unproductive. Just stick with the process we could see a valuable opportunity slip through our fingers. So please, I'm asking 
administratively, can this get done and, and can we get the bids and whatever happens, can we absolutely make sure that this gets to our next meeting so we can make a decision? Thank you. Any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I think that passed unanimously, but I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, if you are not a board member for the Village of Trustees, we're trying to make a motion right now. And if you can mute your microphone, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, so again, I believe I heard that the trustees were all saying aye. Were there any trustees that said nay? Can you please confirm? So it sounds like that passed unanimously. Uh, thank you, staff. Thank you, trustees. Uh, and I believe that is the end of just this village portion of the trustees meeting. We have nothing in the reading file. Well, board members, if you don't mind, can we just go past the reading file for now and do that later? For board member comments. Yes. Great. So then, trustees, we are done for right now. Uh, I believe our select board is ready. few moments for us to get organized and to have our select board members join us for the joint meeting. Hello, everyone. Hello, Elaine. Hello. Can I get a uh, heads up from select board members? Uh, Pat Murray, are you here? I am indeed here. Vince Franco. I am here. Hello, Vince. Andy Hello. Watts. I am here. OK, the select board is present. I will call the select board meeting for Monday, June 8th to order. Welcome select board. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Andrew. Andrew, would you like to be the master of ceremonies today? Oh, I'd love it. Uh, do, do we have any agenda additions or changes for tonight? Staff has nothing to add. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Could you say that again? No, no additions from staff. Does anyone from the select board wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Hearing none, no agenda additions from us. So no need to approve the, the agenda as there were no changes. And this will bring us into the public to be heard. Uh, one thing I want to be very clear on with public to be heard for those who have not attended a, a meeting in the past, this is the point in time of the meeting where if there are comments from the public on items that are not on the agenda, then now is the time. If you have anything that you would like to speak to us in regards to about the merger, which is what we're going to be talking about after this, um, then please wait until that point in time. Uh, I would also include representation as a part of that process. So if it is representation related, if it is merger related, then please wait until we get to those items um, later on in tonight's meeting. So if you have something you would like to say to the boards, go ahead and you can raise your hand if you're in Microsoft Teams. You can put something in chat to notify us that you would like to say something. For those of you on the phone, then when I take a brief pause, uh, just go ahead and let us know you would like to speak. Uh, and the way this will work is I will wait for 30 seconds as there may be a delay. And then we will open, we will have that as an open period for open comments or to let us know that you like to speak. So your time will start now. And I believe I already see uh, Margaret Smith with her hand up. Margaret, is there something that you wanted to address to the boards tonight? Sorry, I tried hard to find the unmute button. Um, I, I, um wanted to say that that link to this meeting was really hard to find and it should I, I would like to recommend that the town put links for current things front and center on their um their town page because it took me about 10 minutes and it wasn't until I figured out how to download the agenda and then saw that the link was there that I, I was able to, to find the link. So, so maybe I'm just technologically challenged, but it was really hard to find the link to this meeting. Thank you. 
Thank you, Margaret. You did cut in and out a little bit, and so I just want to make sure I summarize correctly that you had a hard time finding the login and uh, information as well as the packet for this, and you would like there to be an easier way uh, to have that information accessible to the public, I think is the recap. Yes, that is correct. Thank you, Andrew. Absolutely. Thank you, Margaret. Um, I see uh, Irene Renner, you said you had a quick comment. I do. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I did not see this meeting highlighted on the Greater Essex 2020.org website, and I thought that was the place to find out about all things related to the merger. So I just would bring that to the attention of, I guess, staff to be sure that that's updated. Thank you. Thank you. Ken, I believe I see your hand up. Yes. Everybody here hears me? Great. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I wanted to suggest a slight change to the typical procedures would, would really help a lot, I think. The typical procedure that you folks follow, both, um, well, I'll just focus on the select board, is to receive public input on a decision that's going to be made after the board has discussion. And um, I think it would help the board to hear the public input before the discussion. This would potentially save time because a lot of times the public has something to say, and then the board has to circle back and then take into the account those comments before the decision finally comes to. And then, of course, if we have the chance to speak at the end of the deliberations, but before the decision is made, it always feels like, thank you very much for your comment, but we really have already kind of decided what we're going to do. That's the way it feels from a public perspective anyway. So I'd like to suggest like that small to change that. To, to procedure. Um, <clears throat> secondly, these joint meetings are, are kind of an interesting scenario. Now, I always imagine them as being two separate meetings happening simultaneously in the same place. And I try to think of them in, that, in those terms. Um, when we were meeting physically, the, set, the seating was interlaced, which I always thought was kind of interesting because there's two separate boards, but it was represented as one. Um, with the Zoom situation, of course, there's no interlacing. But one thing you could do to help with that a little bit, I think, is to single thread. So what I mean by that is, let's say there's a decision on the agenda for both boards. One of the two boards should run through the process, make its decision, and then the other board could run through its process, not for reports and public testimony, obviously, but for its own internal deliberations. That way, one doesn't influence the other, and I think that would be a nice change. I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, one thing I want to make sure to highlight is with the business items, uh, we have 5A being the board member's quick thoughts. After that, and the intention of 5A is to only be quick thoughts. Uh, the 5B is to be public comment, uh, so that that way we can get public comment before any kinds of decision uh, is made or anything beyond just a board member quick thoughts. Uh, after we've heard that public comment, that's when we're going to get into the discussion and the and decision. Uh, <clears throat> So there will be uh, plenty of opportunity, or we will have opportunity for the public to speak to the boards um, before we really get too deep into the uh, the discussion period, um, which I believe is is what uh, you were speaking about. Ken. That's exactly what prompted me to think of it. It was a rare exception to the normal, and I think it's a great idea and should be followed through for other issues as well. Thank you. Uh, was there anybody else from the public who wished to speak tonight? My name is Dennis Bergeron. Hello, Dennis. How are you doing today? Fantastic. And yourself? I'm doing pretty good, I guess. You know, I've been cooped up for uh, the past three or four months. Uh, I have a question about the um, procedures with the town clerk, and this may be addressed towards the, um, the town manager. Uh, back in March, I sent in uh, my self-addressed stamped envelope for my taxes to receive my receipt. And I got a receipt back in my envelope showing the taxes paid by a reverend in the town of Essex. 
I contacted Tom Clerks, um, gave him my email address and told him to send me a copy so I can have that ready for my accountant when I have my taxes done. I never received anything. Which leads me to the second question. I just sent in a payment for my dog's license with a self-addressed stamped envelope. The check has been cashed by the town and I haven't seen anything yet. What seems to be the problem with holding people that get races every year accountability? Thank you. Um, I know I cannot speak to procedures uh, on this. Evan, do you have anything you can, or Greg? Sure, Dennis, we're happy to, um, I'll, I'll follow up the clerk's office tomorrow morning, first thing, um, and ask them uh, um, what the situation has been. Uh, not knowing more details than that, I will offer that they have been kind of short staffed and crazy with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, dealing with things a little bit differently. It's, it's possible that was put on the back burner or lost in the shuffle, and if that's the case, I apologize um okay. but i will follow up tomorrow and, and be in touch with you and i believe i have your email address all right thank you very much you want my email address it's I, i'm pretty sure i have it okay thank you you're welcome okay thank you and is there anybody else from the public who wish to speak to the board tonight on something that is not on the agenda One more quick question for me, if I may. Yep, sorry, I didn't see your hand. Select board, are, are there going to be interviews for the new empty select board seat tomorrow or has that been postponed? We will, oh, Greg, go ahead. Um, yes, we're okay, We're uh, planning to do that on next Monday, the 15th. Um, email is showing out today and tomorrow. Thank um, you, Mike. The busy night we have tonight and the number of applicants, we wanted to have a separate meeting for that to, to focus you. on for time, time purposes. Appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else from the public? Speak to the boards about something not on the agenda. I believe that is about 30 seconds. Uh, and I will just note that, George, I see your hand up. Did you have something you wanted no, to address? I or I don't have my hand up. Sorry. Okay. Great. Uh, and can I see your hand up? Is that still just a leftover? No, sorry, leftover. Great. All right. That will move us into business items with business item 5A about board members' quick thoughts. Um, say Elaine and I did not discuss uh, how to go forward with this. Um, I don't know if what we want to do is uh, if we want to start with one board, uh, have you go through, uh, then have the other board pick up from there. That sounds like a good plan, Andrew. Okay. Uh, did you want to do anything to frame this or outside of what's already in the memo? Yeah, not, not really. Just this was a, a chance to initially share very quickly where each board member stands with various thoughts on the topic um, not to direct the conversation in any particular way but just to get it started so that we all have a fair idea of where everyone stands it's been a while since we've talked about this Very true. Uh, would you like to would you like, board like to go ahead and go first sure thank you how about um we'll go in alphabetical order so vince what are your thoughts regarding merger and what you think we should be doing in our next steps. And as our newest member, I'm particularly interested in hearing your thoughts. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts are, um, I think, you know, we've, we've kind of got a, a good plan as far as like a well thought out plan for merger. Um, the only thing that I really take issue with is um, and this is kind of touching on some points uh, that we're going to be talking about later in the meeting is the um, the three plus three charter change that was not taken up by the legislature 
uh, I feel, I feel that, you know, that vote was not for like a town versus village kind of separation, but more for, um, like a district separation of Essex. And I feel, uh, pretty strongly that we should include, uh, some sort of independent redistricting committee, uh, in the, in the merger plan going forward. That's, that's my, uh, that's my thoughts on that. I think, I think we have a duty in, in my personal opinion, I think we have a duty to, uh, the, the residents that kind of, you know, came out strongly in favor of, of those districts to, to give them neighborhood representation. Uh, and that's, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, but other than that, I don't really have, I don't really have a ton, uh, either way. What about regarding whether we vote in November? I think that's the only other big issue that oh, we hear about. Yeah, sorry, I, I thought we were going to address that later, but that's, um, yeah, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't really see, I mean, we're kind of, we're in a, we're in a rock and a hard place here. I think, you know, if we, if we go and, and vote in November, you know, there's going to be people that say it was rushed. If we don't, there's going to be people that say, hey, we missed a presidential election to hear what the whole town had to say. So I I kind of lean toward November um, just because I want to hear from the entirety of the town. And I think that's when that's how we'll get the best turnout. It's it, you know, it's uh, I, I don't think it's ideal with like the situation that we've had. But I would I would um, I would like to see that that vote happen in November. OK. Um, I know my name comes next, but I would like the rest of the board to speak first and I'll go last. So Pat. Yeah, thanks, Elaine. Um, so yeah, I've actually gone back and forth on this issue a few times myself. Uh, at first, honestly, I didn't really have confidence that we'd be able to get out and explain the merger plan terribly well, given the circumstances that we're in. I was envisioning a summer and a fall of being able to get out into the community and be able to explain to people, you know, exactly what was going on. Um, the school budget vote um, shifted my opinion a little bit. Uh, the excellent turnout on that and assuming that mail-in ballot voting continues into the fall for this upcoming election um, would tend to indicate on the surface that we will probably never again get as large of a potential opportunity to hear from as many Essex residents as possible. I mean, that's the true essence of democracy, isn't it? You know, we will never have another chance than this November to hear from the most amount of people living in our town, in the village, altogether. Um, the, the last sort of... Uh, thing is something that I think Elaine will probably talk about because I know that she and I have independently just talked about, you know, the nature of what the economy in Vermont looks like going forward. Um, I've got to say, I've, I've got concerns about where businesses are going to be in the fall, um, where people are going to be with their homes, mortgages and ownership. So uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I have a really hard time saying whether we should go through or not in November as well. Um, I'm at the moment leaning against it, but I still want to hear everyone's opinions. I, I think we have really strong reasons to continue with it. We've done a lot of work with it, um, and the Democratic votes for it are really, really strong reasons to continue with what we're doing. Um, but not knowing where we're going to be is tough. Thanks, Pat. Andy, what are your thoughts? To warn something in August, is that correct? The first part of your question was cut off. Can you start over, Andy, please? So, so it's my understanding that we we have to warn something in August if we want to do a November vote. Is that correct? Is that my this understanding the schedule correct? Yeah, I see Greg and Evan nodding. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so we we have two months left. You know, we've we've put this on the shelf since our our last discussion, which I think was in February, uh, about this. And so, um, you know, I, I I'm I'm 
you know, I, I'm, I wouldn't be against using the next two months to try to refine what's in the merger proposal and making the decision toward the, at the end of July, but that's not too far away. That's the, that's the uh, issue I see is I don't know that we can um, resolve a fair and equitable merger plan, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Um, there are some issues with it that maybe we'll get into later um, that I'd like to see addressed. Um, but uh, um, you know, I, I, I fully see the, the value of getting a lot of voter input in November. And I think if we can pull it off, I'd like to do it. But I think the, I think we're, we're running out of time. Um, and the, the, the proposal as it is right now, I think is, is pretty nearly complete, but we haven't really had discussions about the nuts and bolts of it and, you know, haven't had any give and take with regard to its content, uh, which I think we need to have with public input. And uh, I think there's some challenges with getting that public input uh, in the in the near term so we can have it ready, you know, something ready to go in August. So that that may sound like you know, may not sound like a yes or a no for November, uh, but um, I, I, that's 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 where I am. It doesn't have to be a yes or a no. But thank you, all three of you. Um, Excuse I, me, I have a real quick question. I'm sorry, who's right? Oh, Vince. Yeah. Vince, sorry. Um, can we warn it and then back out? Or do we, well, once we warn it, is it like 100% like we're going to do this? Okay. If you warn it, it's, it's, it's done. No turning All back. Right. Cool. Sorry. Just point of clarification. No problem. So um, I definitely understand all three of your responses. And I, I agree that um, the mail-in vote was a huge success and it indicated um, a great way to get turnout, which uh, is wonderful. Um and the presidential year, we really want to have the turnout that would come from a presidential year. Even if we didn't do a mail-in ballot, we would still have a large turnout. Um, but all of the restrictions around the pandemic have virtually eliminated our ability to communicate with the public appropriately. We can't have gatherings. Um, we can only communicate online. We can't go door to door. Um, it's very difficult to make sure that people are hearing us. and. Um, I like Andy, I think we're running out of time in order to do the necessary education and outreach that would have to happen because even when we had just barely started, we had done one outreach in February that was very well attended and I was super optimistic after that that we would continue doing that and go all over town having information meetings and then we weren't allowed to come out and meet with people. So I don't want to shortchange the public their opportunity to interact with us on this and the draft charter by saying we need to finish by the end of July so that we can have our special meetings in order to approve the warning and to get it to, to the clerk by August 24th, which is I think our, our drop dead date. Um, and all of that actually is secondary concern to me. My primary concern is um, I am extremely worried about the financial situation of our residents and our businesses right now. And um, in my daily work at the Agency of Commerce, I work, we hear from thousands of businesses that they are struggling, they are suffering. The legislature has slashed the governor's economic recovery plan in half. There is not going to be enough money to help these businesses. And Essex's unemployment rate in March was 2.2. In April, it was 13% or more, and I'm estimating it's going to be more than that in May. The numbers aren't out yet. Um, our taxpayers are not going to be thrilled thinking about voting for a draft merger plan that will increase their taxes outside of the usual increases for 12 straight years. And so I am not in favor any longer of pursuing a vote in November. I don't think we should rush. Uh, I don't think it's rushing. I mean, we've been talking about this for so long, I feel like it's never going to end. But I don't want to squeeze the rest of our work into the two-month period between now and the deadline that we have to get it to the clerk. 
What I would like to do is, as Andy suggests, continue working on refining the charter and then um, at the same time work together on other things that can provide property tax relief sooner rather than later. And there are things we can accomplish, which I hope we'll talk about tonight. They're on the agenda, combining the capital budgets, talking about a local option tax. Those things will actually provide some property tax relief to our residents, or at the very least, will hold rates steady and at least not increase quite so much. And in spite of the fact that the residents overwhelmingly approved of, of the school district budget, which is great news, um, I still think it's our responsibility to look at the municipal budget and make sure that we are doing everything we can to keep our residents um, stable financially. I think we're going to see a big increase in um, uh, property tax delinquencies in September. I think our unemployment rate is going to go higher as more and more businesses close. They are not going to get the funding they need and people who live in Essex that are employed by these businesses are going to be out of jobs and not able to pay their bills. And we, the select board just donated large sums of money to all sorts of human services organizations to help those people. And I think we still have more things we could do to help them. And I think that's much more important right now than pursuing merger in November. I am not saying let's not pursue November, uh, merger at all, but I think we should reorganize our priorities and work on think, providing people with some property tax relief as best as we can. And then maybe think about town meeting next year or November next year to pursue merger. But in the meanwhile, continue on the consolidation path that we've been on for the last many years has already self saved us over $2 million. Um, I'll stop talking now. I've got plenty more to say about it, but that's where I stand right now at the moment. Andrew, we've all had our say, so thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Select Board. Uh, I will go through the process um, by picking on whose ever face is next in order. And so, George, if you don't mind, your face is closest. So if you uh, want to kick okay. us off. You, you're sure? You don't want to go in alphabetical order because then I'd go last. That'd take me too long to figure that out. Okay. All right. Wow. Um, I am completely on the fence. I'm very uncertain about, I'm willing uh, to um, listen to arguments on both sides. Um, I'm leaning towards having it in November for uh, the obvious reason it's a presidential election year. The that opportunity to hear from that many people is not going to roll around again for another four years. Secondly, and most uh, not most important, but really key, is we set up the management and, and unified administration as a transitional uh, uh, a process uh, organization. It was not supposed to be permanent. Um, staff has done a really good job in addressing the needs of the two boards uh, for the last few years, but I know that they are very strained, and um, I think that they need some kind of a direction. They need a decision, and I think putting it off, the longer we put it off, um, the harder and harder it's going to be. Merger, whether it passes or fails in November, will give us a very, very clear signal about what's going to happen. So if if we're not going to put it on the on the charter uh, on the vote out for vote in November, I think it's incumbent on all of us on both boards to work with staff to come up with some process for getting them through the next year. Um, the another reason is the uncertainty as a village trustee, um, and I'm sorry if this raises an unpleasant political uh, statement, but between November of this year and March of next year. The trustees, we will have to develop our next budget. And this year, according to our budgets, as we all know, staff and board members, the village will once again be sending hundreds of thousands of dollars to the town to help the town fix roads in the town outside the village, to pave streets and sidewalks in the town outside the village. None of that money comes back to the village when it comes to fixing our own infrastructure, our own roads, our own streets, taking care of our own buildings, we have to pay for it all ourselves. I, I am tired of this year in and year out. Once again, we're gonna be having a, a village budget where we're gonna have to struggle to find out what project we, we put on hold for yet another year. We have streets in the village that, that have been on hold for 10 years. Tomorrow night, we're gonna be telling people on Densmore Drive that they're going to have to wait another year before they get their, st their storm went through and we couldn't fix their street. So I would like to have some decisions. If we're not going to put it on the charter in November, I would like to hope that the select board will work with us on helping on working this out because 
we are really, if you think this, the town outside the village is in a tight spot, keep in mind we have the same population in the village, but we're paying three and a half million dollars more annually to run this community. Uh, on the other hand, it, I, I also have some issues with the, the charter as it is right now. I had grave concerns about, in particular, we have a lot of momentum on community development in the village center. I had hoped that there would be some protections and guarantees built into the uh, a merger charter that make sure that our community development uh, continues forward because we are making great progress. Um, and we haven't had an opportunity to put that in. I had hoped to do that this summer, but that got derailed. Um, and so the, the charter as it is right now, um, it, 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 I think we can fix it. I think we could get it ready for a vote in November, but it's kind of key for me. So I'm, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm willing um, to listen to um, arguments on both sides. So that's where I am. Thank you, George. Dan, you're up next. Well, I echo a lot of what George had to say. And um, my concern is we spent, I don't know how many months going forward with this process and tens of thousands of dollars towards this end of a vote. And uh, to back out now at the last minute, I, I am, I'm opposed to it. I, uh, I understand what Elaine said with the hardship that many of the residents in the community are feeling because of the COVID pandemic. But this, that, this to this, that would pass. This we're looking beyond, you know, and sure, I like the outreach, um, but I think there are ways to reach the voting public, get the message out as we did with the letters in the Essex Reporter and such. Obviously, there was a lot of feedback on those. Um, I just think it's important to move forward with this instead of going backwards. And the other thing that I, I know it's too late now, but for the longest time, every time this has come up over the decades, it's always been a merge or status quo. My opinion is the status quo obviously is not tolerable by the community. That's why it keeps coming back up again. So rather than just have the merge option or status quo, or this right now, this um, uh, shared services that hasn't been codified by any means could just fall apart. I say, I'd like to get a feeling for if this, whatever happens, it'd be either merge or separate. It goes to everybody in the community. Here's your opportunity. You want the, the community to merge together, or you want the community to separate, become the city of Essex Junction, the town of Essex, and get get the people's opinion on that because it it really is not tolerable by people in this community. So I just want to get their their input on that. All right, that's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Dan. Amber, you're up next. So. I got to admit that I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and um, I am still on the fence as well. I could go either way, but the more I listen to folks talk and I think Elaine said a lot of what I was thinking. Um, and so I don't want to repeat what she said because um, she did a good job saying it, but um, I, I have concerns in both directions. I have concerns about um, going forward in November um, based on communication with uh, town and village. Um, we had a plan. We had a plan and I, and I think it's going to be difficult to carry out the rest of that plan given the current environment. And while I understand that it's difficult to even say we would postpone doing this, we wouldn't be having this conversation if we weren't in a current state of pandemic. Um, we, we would be moving forward, but the world is a lot different today. and. Um, I think first and foremost, it's hard to have a, hard, uh, um, a discussion about putting this on when we have so much and so much else going on. Um, I did note that there is um, two other opportunities in the staff memo that says that we could put this on for like a March and an April time frame, I believe. Um, so maybe it's not postponing it, you know, that far, but at least uh, trying to get us through the the, the hump here. Thank you, Amber. Raj? Uh, thanks. Um, I'm going to just try to be quick by saying that um, I'd like to echo George's comments about both staff uh, struggles 
uh, the budgetary issues that he raised as far as uh, village constituents. Um, I thought Elaine um, made a very uh, good case for why um, this is going to be incredibly difficult um, for the residents to deal with right now. Um, I worked really hard with the GovOps, like most of us, um, to get this going forward. So it's a little disappointing, um, but it's really nothing any of us have any control over. Um, I'm super energized by the mail-in voting process we just went through, and I'm, I'll be sad to see that opportunity miss because I think we could hit numbers that are just incredible for voter turnout. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, you know, I think we have a conversation we need to have about representation. I'm concerned about time. I think there's a very simple fix for it, but I know it will take some time to deal with. Um, I know village residents and very many, frankly, town outside the village residents want this done once and for all. Um, and I hear from them all the time. Um, I would love to, and this is maybe a little naive, maybe naive is not the right word. I would love to try not to miss the November uh, ballot. Is, you know, if there's a, a quick way to figure out if we could still have the vote in November, but put off the budget merger. You know, you know, if there's a way we could have the vote in November and see what the committee wants to do, understanding that the actual combining of the budgets, the tax impacts wouldn't happen until some kind of trigger were met. Be that whether the Fed decided that we're no longer in recession or that we drop below a certain number of unemployment combined with tax delinquencies in the town. You know, these things that we're worried about are really worrisome. <laughs> I don't even know if we'll be ready by March or April to, to get out of this, frankly. So, but we're, we've got a great opportunity to get, to keep momentum and to hear from the community um, and frankly, more in the community than we ever would. So I, I don't know if it's even legal. It, it would be an interesting thing for me to find, for us to find out if, if we could, if we could do that, if we could still have a yay or nay, or please proceed um, some kind of, you know, this is where we've come to. People are already voting. We're already holding an election, um, even if it's advisory, I guess. Um, and that that may be uh, how we help ourselves with public feedback. Um, you know, it, I don't know if we're sending everybody a ballot that it costs any more to put a question on it. Um, legality, you know, there's there's all kinds of legal things that I'm not pretending to understand on that. But it, I don't want to see the opportunity missed to move forward. But I, I, I don't see how we move forward asking half of our population to take on a tax increase when we're not even sure everyone is going to be able to pay their taxes. Um, and I just can't get past that in my head. Uh, no, no matter the disappointment of the, um, of the outcome. So I guess I'm, I'm anxious to hear what other people have to say and um, tonight and we'll see how this proceeds. Thank you, Raj. Um, I will try and be brief uh, so we can get to public comments. Uh, for me, uh, where this comes down to is I would love to see us take advantage of the November presidential election. I would love to see us take advantage of what the legislature is seeming to do around uh, allowing for mail-in voting or to mail-in ballots again um, and to take that process out of uh, necessarily us dealing with the community but by putting it on the state level to, to deal with all the logistics on that. We're not going to get that kind of turnout again. We're not going to get that kind of input again for at least another four years. Um, so to miss that will be will be very disappointing. At the same time, yes, unemployment rate is incredibly high, much higher than it should ever be. And so asking the town outside the village to take on a tax increase at this time certainly is not very palatable. Uh, at the same time, that also then means the village continues to bear the burden of the cost for that. Um, especially considering the fact that, uh, not to say uh, older sibling syndrome, if you will, the village created the departments first, the town went in and decided to duplicate it, and now we're paying for it instead of doing it all together at once. Um, I would also say that I echo the concerns around the staff. I'm concerned that, uh, as George has alluded to, the staffing structure that we currently have is designed to be transitional. It is not designed to be permanent. And at what point in time does putting this off end up costing more than what the consolidations have allowed for and or start to mitigate any kind of the uh, savings that may come out of uh, whatever we do instead of merging. Um, those are really the, the biggest things weighing in my mind. Um, I know the pointed question about stay for November or not go forward with November. For me, I would love to see us continue with the plan of let us continue to plan for a November vote 
we have until the end of July. Keep doing these meetings. We keep asking for public input until that point in time, and we wait until the end of July to make that final decision. Uh, we don't know how much this, how much COVID will continue to to be a uh, a pain in our economy. We have no idea how much COVID will be continuing to uh, to eat into the unemployment rate. If I if the news story that I read over the weekend is correct, the national unemployment rate just went down. Uh, in that nationally, the unemployment rate is looking better. Uh, economies are getting better. I don't know how that looks in Vermont, considering we have been more restrictive um, for our health and safety of our community, which I think is a smart thing to do. Um, but how that relates to our unemployment rate and our overall economy, I'm interested to see how those numbers pan out. Um, so for me, I'd like to I'd like to stay with the November vote until we absolutely must call it. And so as far as I'm concerned, we don't need to make a decision tonight, but we can wait until July. So I'd love to see us continue to have these meetings to continue to get this public input and then make the decision at a later point in time. So that's where I'm at. Um, from a process stance, uh, Elaine, do we want to turn it over for public input at this point in time? <laughs> I can't hear you, Elaine. There we go. I, my mic was not going off of mute for whatever reason, so my apologies. Um, I think what we would like to do with the public input portion, first of all, thank you everyone for your honest opinions and i didn't hear anything that shut the door on anything so i'm optimistic we'll figure it all out um so for public input i'd like to ask either greg or evan to be our official timekeeper i think um greg since you are the meeting host you have the capability of muting and unmuting people if necessary um I we have I'm sorry, Greg, what was that? So I think I can mute. I'm not sure about unmute. Okay. Um, so we have 30 minutes that we've allotted. I'd like to see if people in the audience would indicate whether by raising their hand, whether they wish to speak and we can sort of ascertain. If you could raise your hand digitally, that would be super helpful, Al and Dennis. <laughs> not sure. Where that that way we'll, we'll get an actual count of who needs to... I'm not sure how to do that. So if you look at your menu bar on the screen and there's three little dots there, Dennis, do you see that? And right next to it, there's a hand. There's, that's not a, an option. Oh, you don't have that, okay. No option. no option. Okay, well, we know that Al and Dennis wish to speak. Um, anybody who wishes to speak that is, um, oh, I see, it's not on iPads. Maybe that's what the problem is. Thank you, Irene. Um, I'm wondering if we, we usually, our past practice is to use the chat to indicate if you'd like to speak. We can, we can use the chat to do that and go in order as people start saying, you know, chatting that they want to speak. Would that be okay with you, Andrew? Okay. He's thumbs giving up. a thumbs up. Okay. Sorry, there's some noise in my home, so I was trying to do without being the only Okay, and so um, we will go for 30 minutes, and then if there's more people who want to speak, we'll see how many more, and maybe we'll extend it another 10, but let's stick with the 30 minutes for now. Please keep your comments succinct, and um, if you have something to say that agrees with somebody else, please just say you agree with that person and move on, and um, state your full name please, when you, when you are speaking so that we can record it in the minutes. Mute your mic if you are not speaking, please. And I think that's about everything. So um, I'm gonna go through the chat. It looks like the first person who's asking to speak is Irene. Irene Renner. I'd be glad to speak, but I heard Dennis and someone else speak up before me. They wanna go first. Oh, okay, that's right, Dennis and um, Al, so um, Al, and then Dennis, and then we'll go to the chat. Thanks. Thank you. So go ahead, Al. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Uh, very interesting uh, comments. I, uh, I don't know, I, I've been around the town here. I've lived in the town for 50 years, so I've seen this uh, issue for a long time. 
but I've spoken to over, I've been to over 800 homes, probably twice throughout the town outside of the village. And the predominant feeling is people really want to have equitable and fair representation. And the only way that I can see is to have that 3-3. Three, three. Now, we can agree or disagree on it, but uh, there is a whole constituency out here that don't feel that this is fair or equitable. And Elaine, I want to make another point too. If you think the cost, you're worried about costs right now, I'm in that camp. You know, we're, we're looking at state budget, Ed Fund budgets, 155 million in deficit. Transportation fund is, is out of whack. Retirements are, for the state are out of whack, big time. Uh, you name it, there are going to be state layoffs and there are going to be big issues here just from the Ed Fund deficit. You want another one that's coming right after that that will have tremendous impact on school property taxes. It's student waiting as W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. And instead of the current weights, which have been in place since 1977, we're looking at weights that go away. They really don't affect us. We go back to a foundation formula. One pot of money to cover everything, all needs. Ed, special ed, ELL, learning disabilities, you name it. It's a very concerning situation. I, uh, I, I've heard numbers that go with property tax increases of 22 to 32 cents. So think about that. Uh, I'm very worried about this. I wish I had a crystal ball uh, as to how this will play out. And I can tell you this, I've been watching the Joint Fiscal Committee, Ways and Means, Ed Committee on all of their Zoom meetings. No one's got an answer. So uh, that's where we are. We are. I, I wish I had a better feeling. I wish we had more information. I wish our public could get more information from everyone. And they don't have it. That was, and I'm a little bit concerned about that school vault because did these people really vote knowing the financial situation? The answer is no. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Al. I appreciate it. Um, let's. I appreciate you keeping your your comments succinct. And so let's try to get, let everybody keep your minute your comments to about two minutes, which is what Al just did. Next is Dennis and then Irene. Go ahead, Dennis. Thank you. Um, I've been a resident of the town outside the village for over 24 years. I'm one of those people that are now on a fixed income. And I believe that our, when we go to our elections, they're supposed to be, you know, the will of the people. We voted to uh, not merge the rec department and now our select boards are merging the rec department in small increments. We voted for the three plus three, which was fought very hard to have it knocked down by our, to our people up there in the, the Golden Dome in Montpelier. We should be looking at priorities, and I'll, I'll refer to George Taylor, uh, Densmore Street. We spent 100,000, 100 k towards this merger idea over the past year when that money could have been sent to fix the roads. You know what I mean? We send money to the junction for, or the village for the rec department. Why couldn't we just send the money to the junction to fix the road? Unfortunately, our select board is not setting their priorities straight. Yes, we're in a pandemic where people are losing their jobs, businesses won't reopen. I'll give you an example. The couple of restaurants in Burlington will not be reopening their doors because of the pandemic. Same thing's gonna happen in Essex. I think you should look at 
you know, what your priority should be versus working on a merger, which has been shot down before. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Can I just make an observation? The town does not pay the village for rec services. Just so you know, we, we do pay a little bit of rent for one of the studios that we use, but the town does not pay, town taxpayers don't pay the village for recreation services unless a family uses one of the services and then they pay for the they pay for the class or the lesson or whatever. But just wanted to clarify that town taxpayers are not paying the village. Can I can I can I ask you then what happened to what what was the three thousand dollars that the town the select board approved to to forward to the the uh, the Essex Junction uh, Rec Department? That's a good question. That was in order for town outside the village residents to be able to use village recreation services without paying an extra fee. Thank Currently, you. yeah because they were not village residents. So that's what that was. Thank you. You're welcome. So next is Irene and then Annie Cooper. Thanks very much. Um, first of all, I just would like to uh, reiterate that I think it's very hard for people in this summer of COVID to think about one more thing. They're worried about paying their bills. They're worried about keeping healthy. How are they going to get to the store with everything else they have going on? How are they going to keep their kids busy when a lot of camps and preschools are still closed? Um, it's just a really hard time to inform people about local government when that's always a hard thing to inform people about. We don't have a newspaper anymore that's printing letters to the editor or articles in front of people. Um, I just think that this is not prudent to continue with it on this path right now. Uh, as to Vince's comment, there will be another November election in the future, and I would respectfully suggest that you look toward another November election, not a smaller March or April election. Again, when people are who are snowbirds and may not be here, um, people are just not as tuned in usually to the other elections, whether we mail them ballots or not. Um, I think that we revert to a status quo, I think someone said, for a reason. Um, we only ever get people give people this choice to merge or status quo or separate or status quo. A new, a new idea has been introduced in the last 12 months, that is to price out the separate and share plan, which looks like status quo, but it's a lot more fair to everybody involved. And I would once again implore staff to price that out. Feel free to consult with the people who came up with that idea. Um, I think it's a gem. I think it could break the frustrations and the back and forth we've had since 1958 by being just something really new and innovative that will work for us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, okay, Annie and then Tanya Vyhovsky. Hi, thanks, Elaine. Uh, I'm really, uh, it's a, I'm really glad I came to this meeting this evening. It's been really, um, really great to hear each and every one of you on both boards be so um, personable about your feelings about the, uh, whether or not the vote happens in November, I think uh, it was absolutely delightful to see each person speak truly from their heart and to share such differing views. And it's an exciting thing to see people really be themselves uh, at the table. It, it's nice. Um, I think that uh, we can be very grateful that the rec departments have co-located because right now they were able to do some really valuable and important work due to having shared space. And so I think that um, that alone, I just wanted to speak to for, uh, I, st I still wish we'd merged back the rec departments back uh, earlier on and I'm grateful for their current physical shared space. Um, while, I, while I do agree, uh, Elaine, that it would be hard to consider raised taxes uh, out uh, in the town outside the village, uh, I, I hear George very clearly about um, the staff and a, a need to make sure that we that we look at what their setup is and what the work is that we're asking of them. Um, I I do think that um, it is possible to share communication about uh, about the different ideas of merger. The the setup that you were doing, Elaine, I think like this is very possible and very manageable in Zoom and. Um, I think that you might even have more people uh, involved in the in the conversation, and so I'm I'm not sure that I'm really prepared to to toss it all to the wind after all the work 
uh, sorry, I shouldn't, I'm not really in a position to speak like that, but I'm saying I'm, I'm not sure that um, not putting it to vote in November is, is the best idea after all that's uh, been done and said and the emotional components for everybody about wondering this for so long. Uh, but I, I trust and appreciate all the personable ideas, but I do think uh, have a little more some Zoom chats and reach out to the community a little bit further about it before ultimately deciding is my opinion. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Annie. Um, Tanya Vyhovsky and then Ken Signorello. Thank you. This is Tanya Vyhovsky. I think um, one of the things that comes up and I've heard it echoed is that the world that we created this plan, that this plan was created in isn't going to exist on the other end of this and we have no idea what's going to exist. And so for me, there are so many question marks. I think that we have to pause and meet the immediate crisis and then regather our footing and see where we even are on the other end of this so that we can make a plan that is responsive and make sure that everyone gets their needs met. And I don't think that this November has to be the last time we have universal mail-in voting. I think we can push to have that forever. And I think we should push, to, I mean, obviously not at this level, but other states do that. So I don't think that it has to be the only time that we really increase turnout in that way. And I think the representation and the, and the voices at the table is really, really important. But the reality of it is, is everything is a question mark right now. I work as a social worker in this community and the people's anxiety around what comes next is palpable and i think that we really have to pause and wait to see what comes next and have a responsive plan thank you very much tanya um next is ken signorello and i don't see anybody else who is trying to raise their hand at the moment so ken go ahead and i'll keep looking to see thank if anybody wants much. to talk um Maybe somebody can remind me, um, how much does the town pay to the village for maintaining roads in the village? I know the answer. It's $1.2 million. I'm looking at the village annual report and it's right there as revenue. I also see um, another nearly $100,000 for other items if you add them all up, much smaller, obviously. So I just wanted to make that, um, that clarification. The village does receive some funding from the town to support some of those things. Um, the choices have not been merger or status quo. In 1999, there was a choice of separation. So at least there's three. But yes, I did su suggest another alternative, which would be to separate and then share. The idea there is that relationships and arrangements can be made that make sense for each particular service, ranging anywhere from not sharing at all, contract for service, or a utility-like scenario, like the police department, where both contribute to it and both benefit from it, and all of the um, economies of scale that go along with it. Um, I, I'm amazed to think that say that I agree 100% with Raj. Um, a non-binding question on the November ballot would do something that I've always felt was lacking, and that is would give authority to move forward and spend money. This is one of the things that's always bothered me. I've always been um, not clear on how the select board had been authorized to move forward on merger and spend money to that effect. Um, I think that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Ken. Um, next is somebody named Mike with their hand up. Mike, if you're there, could you give us your full name, please? Yes, I'm sorry. Mike Sullivan. Thank you, Mike. Go right ahead. Um, yeah, the um, the words immediate consequences were uh, um, used a few minutes ago. And, you know, I think that very strongly that the immediate consequences for everybody is financial. And the village um, sending the money to the town is, is the thing for me that really uh, I see is we're going to need the money in the town, excuse me, in the village um, for that, for the reasons of recovery for uh, COVID and also for the reasons of uh, just fairness and justice. So um, actually, I was very taken with uh, um, Dan's uh, suggestion that a vote be taken um, for either merge or separate. You do not have a third option. The reason there was a third option 
there was a separation and again and again the town i believe prevented the village from separating um probably financial reasons um so um so and i think an opportunity will be missed if we do not move forward in november with the uh, um with the vote thank you thank you mike um margaret smith and then roseanne oh roseanne's dropped off margaret smith Hi, I'll, I'll make it quick. I just wanted to thank Elaine and Tanya for their comments. And I would love to see the the vote not happen in November, but give us more time to think about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Uh, George, I see your hand up. I just want to make sure there aren't any other residents. There's Roseanne again. Roseanne Prestipino, would you mind? Unmuting your mic and speaking. Roseanne. Oh, what's in the comment chat here? I'm okay. I don't see, I don't hear or see Roseanne at this point. Um, so Roseanne, if you're trying to get in, just pop in when your mic works. Um, Christina Sweet. Hi, I have a really quick comment. I just want to say that I really appreciate the thoughts that everyone has shared and how, and all the various considerations that everybody is taking into this decision. Um, I would really like to see either a vote in November because I feel like some really, uh, a lot of momentum has been built and that the, both boards have done such a good job of outreach so far that a lot of that outreach can continue online. Or um, I also like the idea of a non-binary advisory vote as Roz suggested. So I, I really feel that I leave it up to the, the boards to make a decision in that area. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna ask Roseanne one more time, are you having difficulty getting in All right, George, you had your hand up. You're being patient. You're muted, George. Um, just a technical correction for Mr. Uh, Ken Signorillo. Uh, what you're looking at is the public works operational budget, not the capital budget. The public works, the village and the town back by um, uh, signed an agreement years ago where we would equitably share the cost of uh, public works operations throughout um, the village and the town. And that's what you're looking at. That's a right. $1.2 million transfer from the town general fund to the village. But do keep in mind that 50 cents of every dollar that comes to the village through that is originally originated in the village. So, but that's public works operational. That's not public works capital. We're still talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in public works capital uh, capital projects um, that we have to fund entirely by ourselves. I just wanted to clarify that, Ken. Thanks. All right, so um, I see no other hands raised. Um, I'm afraid I didn't keep track of the time we started the public uh, process, the public comment period did anyone happen to mark the time on that? <laughs> it hasn't been 30 minutes, but it's close to 30 minutes. Um, I, th I think if we go by when Irene asked to speak, we're probably close. <clears throat> oh, good point. I'll look in the chat for that. So um, last call, if anybody is, is wishing to speak. Oh, Ryan Sheldon. There, am I unmuted now? You are good. All right. Um, I, I have, I, uh, from a high level, I want to say that I agree with, uh, with Tanya that um, we're in a pandemic and we don't know where we're going. And I approve of the, the two boards here and the legislature's uh, decision to focus on pandemic related issues first. Um, the challenge here is that government ops gave us a very clear direction 
on um, what, how to address the fair representation here in Essex. And one of those prereqs was, was as part of merger, we need to resolve that first. So we have, and I um, am really worried about the divisiveness of the, of if we do not have the vote in November, what we will do in terms of 3-3, because we haven't met the one of the, I believe, four prereqs that GovOps uh, laid out for us. So um, for just in order to resolve, uh, in, in order to get fair representation in Essex, um, they they recommended we do it as part of as part of the merger vote. And so for that reason alone, I would uh, recommend that we move forward in November. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, okay. I'm looking for people who haven't spoken yet. I do see that Ken has his hand up again, but I'd like to see if there's other folks who haven't spoken yet. Um, my teams is really slow tonight. Sorry, my screen has blanked. Um, okay. I don't have any other folks looking to speak. So Ken, I'm gonna give you one more minute and then I think we'll be able to close the public comment period. Thank you, I'll stick to the, uh, the topic George um, introduced. Um, yeah, I was not referring to the capital at all, George, absolutely not. Um, I just heard you say that, you know, that the village is having to shoulder the burden of maintaining the streets on its own. And I just saw that in the budget as the, the town does contribute to that, as well as a few other smaller things. Granted, the sewer system and the library, they don't add up to very much, but there was a significant amount that the village does receive from the town to help with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ken. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I've, I've got a request for someone to respond to something that another resident said. This is not an interaction between a conversation between residents. So this is a conversation where people are sharing information with the board. So if you would like to respond to a fellow resident, then I suggest you contact them outside of the of the meeting. Um, that said, I don't have any other folks lined up to speak that I can see. So I would recommend that we move on to business item 5C. To see if there's anybody on the phone that wants to, do we have people that are just on the phone, not in the? Uh... I can't tell. Um, Greg, do you know if there's anyone who's just on the phone? I'll try to check. Uh, looks like there's one phone number that's called in, 922-5332. They're on mute right now. Huh, okay. I don't see them in the list of participants. So. All right, yeah, I don't see them in the list of participants. And um, Irene, I see your request to speak. I'm going to ask you to speak to something about what the board is discussing and not be taking up specific comments coming from residents. Can you do that in two minutes or less? Um, am I unmuted still? No, you're fine. Okay. Um, I guess I'd just like to speak to the board given that I saw um, it said by several of the public officials on this call that the legislature had rejected the charter change. And that is not true. There was a letter from the chair of the government ops committee that suggested it be tabled, which is very different than the entire legislature rejecting a charter change. And as for the merger vote, um, I think they were speaking only in terms of if there were a merger vote to happen in November that they had been led to believe or somehow believed on their own that there would be a conflict there but there are plenty of folks who don't see a conflict with having a 3-3 charter change implemented and then having a merger vote that either passes or fails in November. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's everybody, as far as I can tell. Andrew, do you wanna pick up the rest of the business items? Let's jump on into the next I'm one. I'm gonna need a drink. Going into 5C, a discussion on, about continuing toward November 2020 vote on merger. 
Uh, Evan, you have a very well-crafted memo here. Would you like to hit the high-level points? <clears throat> sure. Uh, as you could read in the memo, we, we kind of tried to break this down um, about some of the outstanding questions and um, kind of take them in, in the order. I mean, you could take them in the order that they're listed. We thought it made sense uh, to list them this way. Um, it has been stated, you know, we to be on the ballot, you need to have your ballot question uh, by late July, uh, mid mid July to be early August. Um, so a lot of things have to occur before then. The first question you guys need to think is, you know, um, do you want to go forward? And then um, we had put together um, the merger plan. It's not complete, but a lot of the bones are there. And what's left? And so why don't you just take A and work your way down? Great recommendation. <laughs> Can I, Andrew, may I jump in for a quick second? Please, I'm at it. The, um, the third bullet item under A, should the select board wait until the fifth seat is filled? Um, I'm hearing from some of the board members, both boards, that maybe you'd rather, you, you might be willing to not vote on whether to move forward tonight. If the request, if the desire is that we move forward tonight on a vote as to whether or not to put um, merger on the ballot in November. I think it's my personal preference. I'd like to hear from the select board members. I think we should wait until we have our fifth seat filled. And we're going to be interviewing people next week. So if we wanted to vote tonight, I would like to, to the select board to make a decision as to whether we feel comfortable doing that. And then if not, we could vote as soon as the next joint meeting, which would be June 23rd, and we would have five members. So select board members, I'd like to hear your thoughts real quick. Uh, I'll go first. Um, yeah, I think certainly around an issue as large and substantial as this that we would want a full board representation. I think that our citizenry would very justifiably look at us as you know saying that we've proceeded with you know, less than the full number of people that we would have to make this decision, especially when it is so close to filling that appointment. Okay. Andy or Vince? Yep, I, I agree with Pat. Great, thank you. Andy? Um, I am not convinced that we're gonna decide. You know, we have 10 people or nine people, I guess now. Um, um, I have not seen any material about any of these folks yet. Um, we were gonna we're gonna talk to them on, you know, a week from tonight. Um, given there are four of us and nine of them, there's a probable, you know, there's some probability that we won't come to consensus, um, and that it could very easily go to, uh, you know, have to go to a vote. Um, so I'm I'm. You know, if 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 there's a uh, an intent to have a, a vote tonight or a request to have a vote tonight, I think we ought to go forward with it because it's by no means certain that we'll have a fifth member a week from today. Okay, well, I guess we'll proceed with the conversation and see how it goes at the end of the evening. My concern is. Um, I think I can predict that if we move forward and voted on something as momentous as this, that we would be criticized for forcing merger on the community without full representation. So I just want to put that out there that that's what I expect to happen if we did that. Andy. Well, at, at, at this point, we're two and two inside and outside the village. So it may be a better time to do it than not from that perspective. Okay, well, we'll have the conversation, see what happens at the end of the meeting. Thank you for that sidebar. Sorry, guys. I appreciate it. I know Quick personally, question. Elena. Oh, Sorry. go ahead, Vince. Um, if we decide 
Uh, if we don't come to consensus, can we make that decision the 23rd? Don't come to consensus on what? On a on a repl on a fifth member. Like, would it be appropriate to make this decision later after, even if we're not at consensus, but we've you know given it the good call a try? Um, I'm or not sure. It, okay. I I, I, I I guess I don't know what the select board thinks about that. The other members of the select board. We do have a large number of candidates, and we have a lot of um, interviews to conduct. I couldn't possibly handicap how we're going to come out on any of them. And as Andy pointed out there, we are now two and two, which shouldn't matter in either direction. But should we come to a tie, the we will not be able to choose someone. So we may end up doing something like a second slate of, you know, a final round, so to speak. So um, at the risk of delaying the conversation any further, I think we should just jump into the conversation about November and see how all the boards feel by the end of this meeting, what we're going to do next, if that's okay with everybody. Yeah. Andy, is your hand still up, or do you have a, a new question? Okay. Thank you all. I think I see Patrick's hand up, and before we jump into that general conversation, Patrick, is it related to the, the fifth? No, no, I think my computer is just being slow. Okay. Um, Raj, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, um, let's, sorry, I guess we'll just move on, but my only concern about the 23rd would be that that essentially leaves us with considerably less time to, I mean, you know, I, I almost feel like, it, it, you know, if we can't, if we can't make the call, then, you know, the 23rd means we get moving into July and then we've got to do this, but, but I guess we'll just keep going with the conversation. I understand, well, I, mean, the, I understand the position the select board's in, which is not a great one for y'all. I get it. But we were talking about maybe not deciding at all until July whether to put it on the ballot. That's true. So That's true. Let's just keep yeah. talking. Yep. You're right. George, I see your hand up. Is that left over? No, sorry. My hand is not up. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I keep forgetting to lower. So... Uh, to jump down this list about uns about outstanding questions and other information that is needed. Um, I'm assuming that as we're talking about this, it's talking about what other information do we need to move forward uh, and make a decision about whether to move forward for November or not. Um, so I would open that up. Uh, I personally don't have any questions. Um, my only question I had stated really is, well, the unemployment rate that we're not going to know yet, um, having that as soon as that comes out will be helpful. Uh, I would love to see uh, if we choose not to um, go forward with a merger vote in November, then what will the impact be on staff? What will the impact be in terms of, uh, will there need to be additional positions? Um, and if so, what are they doing? Uh, how, much are, how much are we talking about and what kinds of impacts that's going to have on the budget? Um, so from my perspective, uh, that is the only outstanding question I have in terms of whether to move forward or not. Um, and I would, uh, Andy, I see your hand up. I was just about to turn it over to the trustees to go through if they had any other questions. Um, is it about something that I said? No, nope. no, nope. okay. sorry, I'm done. Okay. Um, so then if we want to, or if we can just go through the trustees and see if there's any other questions uh, related to this. Uh, Raj, do you have anything? Um, related to this section A here? Or? About questions that you have um, to move forward with November or not? Um, many. Um, I, you know, I think that the charter has a few holes to fill. Um, George laid out some of them. Um, we have to decide what we're going to do with representation. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, um, I think there's a lot of unknowns out there right now, so I'm not sure. Um, and again, I, my, my preference would be <clears throat> to see if, see if there's uh, a way we can keep the process going. I, I don't know how quickly we can get a determination to see if doing this part way is even 
Okay. Um, you know, so I, I don't know how we find that out or, or if the boards even want to go down that road. Um, I think that the charter could be finished. The proposed, the uh, merger proposal could be finished. Um, I, I think that there's an answer to the representation um, that would make people happy. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, you know, the, the overall concerns are financial and, and community impact and resident impact. And I, I just don't think we have that information, so. Okay. Thank you, Raj. George? Um, I don't have any questions. I will clarify. I, in, since I, I have been working on the charter and worked with Anne closely on all this, my opinion is that um, really the only real outstanding question, uh, there are two questions. First of all, uh, the, the, I think the concept of a 3-3 representational model is dead in the water. All right. That's my interpretation. Um, back in 2018, and maybe this isn't the time to bring it up, but I think there's we keep going around it, and I think it may be to be good to get it off the table right now. Back in 2018, the, when we formed the governance subcommittee, um, two people from the out from the town, two people from the village, two from the select board, two from the trustees was the first thing we did. We hired a lawyer. We hired an expert on municipal law, Dan Richardson. Um, and one of the first questions we asked Dan was, it, it does the, would the legislature allow an even number board? His answer was, there's no state statute against it, but don't do it. They don't like it. They won't approve it. Don't do it. There aren't even numbered boards. You need to have a way of breaking a tie. If you had a mayor, you could do it, but you don't, you're not going to have a mayor. So don't do it. Um, we also heard equal protection clause, uh, you know, 14th amendment. And we have a lawyer. <laughs> Sitting on it on the trustees, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but we got two issues here. You you have to if you're going to have wards and and districts, they have to be proportional. Okay, you can't not have, you can't have one larger than the other. The problem with the three three plan is that you have no way of adjusting the borders. If particularly if you continue to have a chartered community, the chartered community of Essex Junction, the town has no authority to just at, at a will, at a whim, change the village's border in order to accommodate growth or changes in the population, okay? You also cannot throw a duly elected official off the board um, who, uh, just because you want a charter change. So we, we, we learned these things from Dan Richardson. Um, we repeated them, we kept talking about them. Um, the folks who uh, brought the, the, the uh, the petition around and, and instituted the 3-3 three, three, um, uh, charter change, we told them, we said these things to them in, in public hearings over and over again. We were ignored. I look at the letter from the government op ops committee and what did they say? We don't like even numbered boards. We don't like it. Okay. They, even numbered boards don't make good decisions. You cannot, you have to have a, a transitional uh, 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 plan. You can't just throw someone out. Exactly, I don't want to be redundant, but exactly the same things that we kept saying over and over again. So I think the 3-3 three, three plan in particular is dead in the water. And that's why we proposed a 2-2-3 two, two, uh, arrangement or a 3-3-1 three, three, arrangement as a backup, okay? And I think that's because some people didn't like that and didn't want to see the compromise, they instituted the 3-3 three, three thing. But it's not going to work, and so I think that would be a problem. I think we can, the 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 remainder, what what's the work that's left on the charter would just be to decide: do we want to have the original uh, two two three model that we had uh, originally um, recommended, or do you want to have a three three one model um, that you know changes it somehow? Um, and then, I, as I said, I, in my mind, a really big important piece is community development and how are we going to maintain the integrity of our our d different. Um, uh, land development codes and municipal plans in a in a in a consolidated environment. I think there's time to do that. Um, and then the last um, piece would only be making sure that we, if the village is going to have a sidewalk district and and uh, the the phase in plan, um, that we are clear about what those are and and how those are going to be worded. One other thought that I had, and I think we've kind of kicked this around, is that if we had the charter, we could put into the charter that the economic changes that are called for in the charter don't kick in for a year okay so you could have the charter you could have the representational model kick in but the but the the 
the, the budgetary stuff doesn't kick in for another year if everyone's concerned about that. But I think the charter could be ready um, relatively, I don't say easy, but I think as long as we move quickly and, and work efficiently, it could be ready um, to put on a ballot by August. That's my opinion. Thank you, George. Uh, Dan, questions? No. Uh, again, George kind of sums it all up. Uh, I agree with the some of the changes. As far as the financial impact for taxation purposes, what George said at the close there, I was thinking that why can't we postpone that? I know people are feeling a hardship right now, but still move forward the vote. And as far as the instating the, 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 the tax adjustments down the road, push that down the road, you know, based on the pandemic we're going through right now. Thank you, Dan. Amber? I don't have any questions. Um, I do have about a half a page of notes on the uh, proposed uh, charter, <laughs> um, but that's at a later time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, select board, Danny, or uh, <laughs> Elaine, sorry. I have to wait for my mic to come on. Um, so I'm so, sorry, Andy. What are your thoughts about? Um, are we still talking strictly about Section A of our discussion, or are we kind of all over the place at this it, point? It doesn't. It doesn't seem so. Yeah, go go for it, Andy. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the the things that I see that we need to close. Um, you know, the last time we met, we talked a lot about the districts, but and people gave their opinions, but we didn't didn't you know, nail anything down. We didn't, you know, we didn't make any decisions. We didn't do any negotiating. And I, I think that's something that we would need to do is, is figure out what the districts, if we're going to do go that path, what they're going to be, what the terms are, what, you know, what, what, what happens with those. Um, representation and an end and associated transition plan need to be nailed down. I disagree that three plus three is dead. I think the, the way I read the letter is that it would be considered if all of the concerns were addressed um, in the merger proposal that goes forward. Um, you know, the legislature can always modify however they want once they get it. Um, and given, given the, uh, the vote that we had in March, I don't think we should write it off quite so as, as, uh, read, readily. Um, other thing that we haven't touched on that George mentioned this already is the planning. Um, I have, you know, Comments from people outside the village, they say, sure, I'll pay more taxes as long as all the development is focused in the village where it belongs. Um, so there are there are concerns about, you know, there's property right questions, you know, I, I want to be able to develop my land. And there's also people that say, I don't want people around me to develop their land. Um, so that 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 uh, is, is a big discussion. And, and, and George, I do understand the, the village's uh, uh, need to do um, infill development and, and you've got a lot of stuff going on there that needs to be recognized and, and carried forward. Um, and uh, in, in any in any regard how we do representation because it's it's obvious that we need some sort of representation plan we need to also have the re you know the reapportionment uh, part included. Um, I, I struggle with thinking we can close all of those things in the next four weeks. Um, so, um, so that's where I am. Andy, thank you. Pat. Oh boy, where to start, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think I'll just try to keep it brief. Lots of people have said lots of things and, you know, I think like so many of us tonight, I'm on the fence about a lot of this. Um, I would like to see a finished plan. I think that if we could look at that and decide in late July, if we're a go, no go at that point, then I see no harm in us continuing to at least try to make that happen. Um, you know, with all the work that we've done, you know, and come so far, you know, with the grave reservations I have about where the economy may be, you know, at least if the plan or excuse me, the charter changes are made and we're set to have something on the table that we as two boards can look at and say yes or no. 
in July, I'd much prefer to at least have the possibility to go back and do that. Um, I was thinking a little bit about the economy and about adjusting the tax rate for those TOV individuals. And from what George has said as well, honestly, this is something that I struggle with, particularly as a select board member, because half of my constituents would see tax increases and the other half would see decreases. And I know that there's a lot of history and back and forth before certainly I moved here about when IBM had the, you know, was the golden calf and the village got all of this and the TOV didn't get that. And I've heard those arguments so many times that honestly, I'm really ready to put them to bed. Um, what happened in the past is in the past, but what happens right now is that we know from school impact data that the village of Essex Junction is in need of tax relief more than the TOV. This is not a, you know, universal. I know there are some families who in the TOV are certainly, you know, run down economically. Um, there are some very wealthy families who live inside the village, but the school systems data was such that they took away a lunch serving place in the town outside the village because the financial basically center of um, you know those who got free and reduced lunch to move so dramatically towards the village center. Mm -hmm. um, that's why there's only one place now where food service is done out of the Maple Street Park location. So it's difficult for me to tell those constituents that I serve in the village that we've got to wait a few more years, four more years maybe, if we're looking at a next presidential election. Um, I struggle with that a lot. I, I think the village needs that tax burden relief more probably than the TOV does. And I've realized that asking anyone for a tax increase now is tough, but otherwise we're just ignoring the fact that right now there's an inequity. And if we don't look at that now, then how long are we putting off addressing that inequity? It's, it's a tough question. Um, I would, I wish that I had some exact specific information. Maybe I can get that if the boards are interested. I could talk to the school district about what the economic, like, you know, percentages are of where people live within the village to see if that might have an impact on anyone's decision or not. But I know it's something that I've thought about quite a bit in the past. Um, so I guess that's, that's where I am. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. I appreciate having that additional data that I hadn't heard before myself. Vince. Yeah, so I have a quick question for Evan before I start. Uh, Evan, we talked, uh, I think, a little bit about um, about the merger plan and the charter change. And I don't think, uh, I think you mentioned that, like, if we have language in there that, like, the board shall do something in the future, that's not really great or not acceptable. Is that true? I think that's that that's mainly correct. They they okay. the 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 government ops committee, which is where charter changes go, if they don't recommend approval, it, it isn't going to a okay. legislative vote. They do not they tend not to like those terms, shall and not. It, it is what's in your charter and um, but I want to make it sound like I'm equivocating. They, they don't like when you put things off to other boards. Gotcha. If I could tell you that, but yeah. if you said something like a committee shall be created per the charter, yep. it's created. Okay. It's not, somebody could say, oh, we're not going to do it. It's created it will exist. Um, if you created a tax table for years of what you're going to do, that's your charter. You would literally have to vote as a community to change that chart. Okay. So that's the difference. Gotcha. So yeah, I mean, my major concern is still a representation model. Uh, I believe that, you know, 
uh, Essex spoke pretty loudly um, with the three plus three uh, vote. And I don't, I don't really believe it's a village versus town thing. And I think that, uh, that a committee should be created as part of the new charter to um, district Essex. I, I, I mean, I think that the, that the three plus three charter proposal, charter change proposal, um, you know, was kind of like the, the best like that the, the, the citizenry best. could do when they proposed that, that uh, <laughs> charter change. And I, I think that, uh, you know, we can, we can probably be a little more elegant than that. And I think we should be a little more elegant than that. Um, and that's, that's my opinion. I, I also think that we should, we should move forward as though we're planning for a vote in November. And if we have to call it off at the last minute, we call it off. Uh, but I think we should put all our due diligence into trying, trying to, to go forward. No, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Vince. Um, I just had a, a small number of things about the charter that I would like to just at some point discuss. Um, I, I agree with Andy on the, the concept that the government ops committee didn't flat out reject 3-3, that they would look at it again if we fixed whatever they, you know, the things that they felt was wrong with it. But I do feel they were very clear that an even numbered board was not okay. Uh, but considering the turnout and, or excuse me, the voter results of 3-3, I feel that we need to honor the intentions of the Essex voters and keep make it three three and one, so that even if there's a majority, there there will always be a majority for one ward or another, but it will never be more than one person. In a in a ward setup of two two and three, that it could be five from one ward and two from another ward. So three three and one honors the spirit of what the voters wanted, but we weren't able to fully accomplish. And then adding the at-large member makes it um, an odd-numbered board, which would meet the requirements of the Government Ops Committee. Um, I would, like Andy, also have a chance for both boards to look at the full charter, um, draft charter in its entirety. Um, there's a couple nuts and bolts items that I would like to address as well, a few things that I want to tweak. Um, but on the whole, I think the draft charter is outstanding. There is a proportionality clause in there. There's instructions for how to make sure that our, we're meeting the equal protection clause of the Constitution. There's a transition plan in it that makes perfect sense. I think that that charter is ready to go for the most part with just a few things to discuss. Um, I'm not crazy about the idea of a sidewalk district, so I would want to discuss that more. Um, mm -hmm. I had a resident mention to me the other day, you know, we understand the idea of a sidewalk district because, you know, the village has all sidewalks and we have walkable, you know, kids are always walking to school. However, um, the village has no gravel roads, yet the town has way, way, tons of gravel roads. And so village residents are paying for graders and they're paying for culvert washouts and they're paying for gravel that they're never going to walk on. So the logic about town residents not walking on village sidewalks and so therefore they shouldn't pay for them, that doesn't hold water for me. So I would like to have that conversation. Um, the only other thing I think we might wanna do, again, I'm still not in favor of doing the vote in November, finish the charter and release it to the wild. Get it out there to the public in its entirety. Let everyone read it. Let them think about it for a good long time. Let them get back in touch with us about it hold some meetings, however we manage to hold them, and then finalize it and go forward from there. Not saying that we re reopen the entire document up for editing by all 22,000 of us, but rather we say to the public, this is our final best effort. If we go to the ballot, this is what you'll get. Tell us what you think. I think we should do that. That's, that's the select board. What I'm hearing, it sounds as if we keep moving forward. Uh, let us get to um, the point where we can get that public input and then we can call it when the time comes. Uh, when we get to that deadline period, we can then call it when that time comes. Um, before I keep going, George, to you see your hand up. Uh, well, I don't, I didn't want to interrupt you, Andrew. I, I didn't know where we, what stage we are in the discussion and the process. So I, if you're on a roll, go for it. I won't interrupt. 
Who would you like to go next? <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I, I wanted to comment on what Elaine said. I think I, I generally agree. I think we should finish the charter and get it out there. I don't think um, there's huge work to be done, and I think it, it could float around. I guess, what are you saying, Elaine, like for the month of July? And then we get feedback, and then we make, well, we're getting public input on the charter, but you, we're also kind of uh, deliberating on whether to proceed in November. So that gives us about a month and a half, which is fine. I think we, that's all doable. I just want to get clear that that's what you're saying. Is that what you mean? Um, yes and no. As I said, my preference is to not vote in November. So right. I'm speaking as if we're not going to. That's all. Um, okay. If there's some kind of happy medium in there where the residents get to see the final product and we get to talk to them about it and we can fit all that in, great. If you, if we can possibly begin to, if we're not going to vote on whether to put it on the ballot tonight, then we should start scheduling charter meetings so we can start going through the charter and finish that up and then make the decision. The select board will have a fifth member by then and we can decide at that point. And there may be enough time. I, I don't feel like we're, I think we do have enough time to finish these final things on the uh, the charter. I actually do think we have time for that. Mm -hmm. right. Have to see your hands up. Yeah, I think. I was wondering if a different way of looking at it might be, at least as far as deciding whether or not to go to the ballot in November, would be looking at the alternatives and deciding whether or not they're palatable. To us or not because there's talk about doing it three or four months later in march which honestly doesn't really sit as well for me at all um you know especially at that point i guess so much of this is obviously dependent on covid but more so that we have no idea where we're going to be with covid in march of next year or next year. march two years march. from now so while respecting the concerns of especially our, you know, some of our citizens who spoke up tonight about, you know, waiting for the world to get back to a sense of normalcy. I'm, I don't know, and I don't know that any of us can say that we're ever going to get back to a normalcy before, or excuse me, a normalcy again. Um, you know, so if we're not doing this in November, the November after that, if I'm recalling correctly, we don't actually have uh, anything on the ballot. It's, it's an off year. So, you know, realistically, we're looking at another statewide election two years from now to get another semi-decent turnout. So that would be, I mean, for me, minimum two years, you know, preferably four. I mean, looking at that, do all of us on the boards really want to sit with this for two to four more years? Or are we okay with significantly less of a potential contribution as far as votes go? And try to have it in March. I mean, when I'm going to ultimately decide on voting in November or not, I think I'm going to have to answer that question for myself. So I just kind of want to put it out there for all of us to chew on that. If we're not doing it in this November, then in your heads, where is it? And is if it's two years out or four years out, are you all okay with that? Those are certainly important questions that none of us, I, I don't think, are going to be able to answer tonight. Um, and I know it relates to one that a few others uh, had spoken about, which also relates to the uh, what does that impact on staff um, in terms of if we're waiting two to four years, that's a significant difference. And if we're waiting until March or April, which in thinking about that alternative, frankly, I don't think we can. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because we don't know about COVID. We don't know how that's going to play out. We do know that the flu season comes uh, around the November, the September through November time frame. There are uh, ramifications from that that continue for months beyond. Um, and that's when COVID started to rear its ugly head, which was right around town meeting uh, this, this year. So we really want to test that waters. And I don't think that personally waiting until uh, March or November or March or um, April makes any sense. Personally, waiting until this upcoming, or not, Waiting until November 2021 20, makes no sense for a special election in my mind. Is that really waiting until um, a statewide is what we would need to do? Um, Andy, I see your hands up. Yep. Uh, regardless of when we decide to vote, I'd like to for the, the boards to consider the path to get there 
Um, you know, un unfortunately, we got the the f current draft. Um, you know, uh, f Friday, I didn't I did not have the opportunity to read through the whole thing before this meeting. Um, but what I'd like to suggest is that the boards continue or not continue that to consider is the word I was looking for uh, deliberating separately on it and then coming together and working out compromises rather than trying to have 10 of us in the same room talk through each of the sections. Um, I think, um, uh, or, you know, or yeah, and, and, and I, I think that way we'd, we'd make progress faster and we'd also, it would look more, it would be more transparent. It would seem more um, like a negotiation than a, uh, um, than, you know, and, 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 you know, we could, we could each go through the, the uh, document and then uh, raise the question, okay, which, which sections are non-controversial and approve all of those and then only work on the sections that there's disagreement between the two boards. I think that would be a good path forward. I think it would, it would, uh, it would go quicker. And again, it would, it would uh, involve some negotiation and compromise. Um, I, I think it would be a good path forward. I don't not, you know, there, I, I, again, I don't think we can do that in six weeks. I think it's going to, it's uh, whether we do it with as, as a group of two boards meeting simultaneously or separate boards and then doing a reconciliation. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm, Maybe we can try, but I don't know if we can get there. Uh, Rod, I saw your hand up. Um, just listening to Andy, I like that approach. I think it'd be more efficient. Um, give the boards uh, an opportunity to focus on what's important to them and then bring it back to the joint uh, for negotiation. I, I kind of like that idea. George? Yeah, I, I agree with that approach, and I think it, but I would disagree with you, Andy, that it can't, you don't think it could be done. I think it could be done very quickly, and, and here's why. I think the, other than the transition portion of the charter, I think the bulk of it is pretty, pretty much boilerplate. Um, and this is what Ann discovered. You know, you look at the village charter, you look at the town charter, you look at other modern municipal charters in Vermont, and huge sections are all very, very much the same. For example, the powers of the manager in you know, a council manager form of government, they're identical. So I, I think not not identical, but they're very similar. So I don't think I think the bulk in the body of the charter outside the transition portion. Um, yeah, I think it'll be pretty straightforward. I think when, if we all all nine or hopefully 10 of us read it, I think we'll see that the controversial pieces are in the transition portion of the charter. Um, and I, I think those are those are pretty limited. So I, I do agree with you. I think that's a good idea. I think we should do it. But I think I think it's a very doable piece of work. That's all I'll add. I was just going to say something very similar to that, George, around how if I think about where the contention may end up being and where the disagreement may end up being, it's in that transition yep. period. It's in the potential of the representation model, reapportionment, uh, taxation, and maybe around development. But yep. that by far and large, um, I will also admit I didn't read the whole charter um, from the portions I read. It looked very similar to uh, the town charter, it looked very similar to the village charter, yeah. um, which are all very similar across all the communities that have charters. Um, so I don't think there would be a lot of disagreement. And um, so I was going to push back a little bit and say, do we really need to do that if we can already pretty much name what the uh, what the contention points may be? At the same time, I'm willing to do it for the process if that's what um, the boards want to do. Elaine, go ahead. Um, can we talk a little bit about staffing needs in the event we decide not to put the ballot out on November? I, I agree with all of you that we have pushed our staff to just about the breaking point with how long it's taking for us so far as it is. And the sharing of a single staff for two municipalities was definitely meant to be a temporary solution as we pursued merger. Um, whether or not we get there in November, um, they're, they're hurting. And so I, I don't know how to address this other than to ask whether people think we should consider 
this as part of the FY21-22 budget process. I think this is something that needs to come sooner. Some kind of um, ability for the manager to spend funds to hire the appropriate administrative staff to bear the load. Um, I, I, that's something that is constantly in the back of my mind. And no matter what decision we make, whether we you know, extend things six months or a year or we go for November, there's still the workload and we're doing all these doubled up meetings and we're asking staff to be at five to eight night meetings a month, uh, five packets at a time, it's, it's brutal. So absent of all the other things we're discussing, I think we should talk, talk about supporting the staff, whether we move forward or not and how much we're willing to allocate, perhaps out of fund balance, I don't know how we'll do it, but I think that there's some staffing issues that need to be addressed and we need to give the manager the, the ability to do it. I would uh, follow up with Evan Gregg. Um, what yeah. do you think in terms of a, what do you think in terms of a time frame of being able to get us that kind of information? for say if this uh, is pushed back for um, the next statewide election in two years or a federal election in four? First of all, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> recognizing that we work hard. Um, thank you. Almost like everything you've been talking about tonight, it depends. Are we talking six months? Are we talking a year? Are we talking two years? Uh, almost anybody can put up with anything for six months, um, unless you've been at it for five years, and now you're adding six months or two years. Right. Um, I've only been at it for two years, so my tolerance uh, is pretty good. Um, sy systematically, it is very difficult with the number of packets and night meetings. And, and who do we go to for decisions and always trying to wait for it to all come together. Um, I could have, if, if you guys are willing to put in the time to get the transition and the charter language correct, we will put in the time to get you an answer for what would be needed if the answer is not November. And to add a little bit to that, um, I think part of it is it's definitely a conversation about staffing. We've also talked a lot the past few months about what what staffing means for our residents, for our businesses, for the economy. Um, we've talked about soft hiring freezes. We have one and a half positions in the manager's office right now that are open um, that we have not filled. We've stopped looking for those positions. Um, so in some ways, it's a matter of some of it could be a matter of filling some of the positions that we already have funded, um, trying to be trying to be wary of what that means for our residents. Um, like Evan said, part of its timing, are we talking six months or four years? Uh, and then the only other thing I'd add in there is, is the procedure part of it. And don't have answers to it yet, but just the, the procedures of the boards meeting twice a month each, whether it's together or separately. Um, uh, processes of, of administering recontracts, two personnel guidelines, um, those types of things take up a lot of time too. So, so it's staffing is part of it, but I think just being open to new ideas and then helping staff brainstorm some options about what we can do administratively and, and procedurally can be helpful. And maybe having less things that have to go to the boards um, that could be done by the manager and stuff with some guidelines could help reduce the time we spend at meetings. Um, it's a jumble, but um, I think myself, Sarah, Greg, Travis, and many other department heads feel this has always been a worthwhile attempt. And if they see the light at the end of the tunnel, um, they will continue to work for it. Um, they just want to see that light. Um, I, I've mentioned this before uh, for the audience at home. There's only 16 days per month, Monday through Thursday, on average. 
And if you are doing five to eight night meetings a month, that means half the month you are not spending with your significant other, your family or whatever. You are in a night and the time it takes to prepare that agenda, get the documents for the agenda, put the packet together, get it out to your members in time for them to be able to read it and make good decisions. And sometimes we don't even remember what agenda we put things to because they start running into each other. Um, and it's not fair to the members either because you aren't even given time to discuss some of the real key issues that are, are prevalent today, let alone what you should be planning for for tomorrow. So it's just the world we live in now, um, but we'd like to see the end of the tunnel. So um, we appreciate you thinking of staff and we would put together some ideas. You're muted, Elaine. I think George had his hands up. Um, I just want to quickly, I was just at, before at the outset of the conversation, I was going to suggest that it does, this would really need to be a staff led. We would have to get a couple of their perspectives on this. Um, it, it, you know, maybe give us a, a couple of different ideas and options and, and a mix of things. I think the big thing that we could probably do right now in terms of this, this specific issue is make a commitment that regardless of what happens, let's pretend, let's say we put it on a, a merger on the ballot in November and let's say it fails. I think we, that we still believe even in, under that circumstance, we would, we would continue to have a unified administration in the village and the town. Is that correct? I mean, if we put merger on the, on the ballot in November and it failed, that doesn't mean we blow ourselves up and we go back to 2006. I think it just means we we take that as a loss and but we continue with a unified administration and we continue a lot of the things that we've been doing in the past i i i i think that's where we are i think that's correct um but it might be reasonable and a good idea to get a um get a sense of the the rest of you if that's what you think should happen if or what if 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 we put merger on the ballot in november and it fails what what do you think then we just give up and go back to being completely separate. I, that's not my understanding, but maybe that's maybe I'm incorrect. This is where my suggestion of not voting in November <laughs> could be helpful. Okay. If right. we didn't put merger on the ballot and instead we focused on the consolidations that we have not yet completed, for example, capital budget and perhaps fire. We could continue to address the tax inequity situation, especially in a significant way, if we do capital first. By doing that, we could address how the village pays for capital projects and how the town spends the money the village pays for capital projects. That's the large chunk of the inequity that's still left to deal with. If we could accomplish that, then look towards merger again when we're ready after that, then the cost of merger to the average town outside the village home would be significantly less than the $26 a year we're discussing now. <clears throat> and if we fold in the local option tax, then everybody benefits because it will shift the cost of capital a little less off, the, a little more off the shoulders of all the taxpayers in the town. Um, and address the, the desperate list of infrastructure projects that we have. So I feel like if we pull back a little bit on pursuing merger and instead use the tools we have that are waiting for us to be used and continued on that route, because we've already done it with public works, we've set a precedent, the voters already approved moving a huge chunk of the village budget into the town budget and spreading that cost evenly amongst all taxpayers. We've already done it and it's been hugely successful. Let's continue doing that. That's what our public works um, review committee recommended a couple years ago when we reviewed the MOU between the village and the town and public works. Let's move forward on doing that. And then we would be able to feel like we're keeping the momentum and we would still accomplish stuff because if we vote on merger in November and, every, and it goes down, people say no, then status quo, stays where it is 
And if we continue trying to consolidate after that, we're going to hear from residents who are saying, you're merging and you, we told you not to. So, uh, you know, I personally can't abide by the, the inequity of 50% of the town paying more for services than the other side of the town. I have a huge problem with that. And we could continue to fix that whether merger passes or not. I gotta lower my hand here. Have we lost Andrew? Nope. Oh, oh. I'm right here. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Okay. You're just not <laughs> in my my Brady Bunch setup here, so. <laughs> no worries. Um. Frankly, I'm unsure where to take this next. Well. Um. It. This is Raj. Um. It sounds like we want to keep working on the charter and we want to see where we get to by mid to late July. Let the fifth new member of the select board weigh in and perhaps identify the remaining sticking points between the two boards and try to get those ironed out as efficiently as possible. Um, and barring that, we won't know which way we're going until we see how that plays out. And in the interim, there was Andy's suggestion about um, our two boards going our separate ways in terms of looking through the charter, drafting up our recommendations, and then coming back to a compared uh, version and then um, negotiate from there. And I would sort of be in favor of that um, yeah. just because yeah. I sort of feel like that'd be more expedient. Yeah, that's fine. I like that idea. Okay. Pat has uh, his hand up. Go ahead, Patrick. Patrick, you muted. There we go. Uh, question that I, maybe I missed an email or I'm not sure if it got answered. Um, do we know or do we have an answer yet about what would happen if there was a merger proposal in November and if there was something else going on, um, like you know something else getting put on the ballot, um, an, an adjustment to three three. Um, I can I can offer an opinion there, Pat. I can't give. I don't think anyone can give you a definite answer. And we had contemplated, you know, I, I wondered if we should have had Dan Richardson here tonight, but I didn't think it was, you know, as a, as the chair of the subcommittee. I didn't think it would be a good would have been a good use of his time because we really had political stuff to talk about, which is what we've done. But my interpretation was they they cited our governance subcommittee report in the letter. Um, they referred multiple times to the fact that that these these merger discussions are going on. I think they concluded the letter by saying they look forward to working with us in you know in the context of a merger. I, I don't think they came right out and say it, said it, but I'm going to offer my opinion. I think under the circumstance you're saying, if if we sent a merger charter down there in November, you know, it, it actually would be in January. It wouldn't be in November. Um, and at the same time, uh, there was another uh, petition and a ballot initiative like the one we just saw. I I think that they would just give precedence to the merger. I I don't think that they would. That I think they would see it as coming from um, the two boards and having uh, a certain a, a, a certain uh, dimension of um, credibility that's that's higher or something. But I that was my impression um, from reading their letter. George, may I just ask uh, yeah, Evan? Yeah. I see your hand up, so I'm just gonna make a comment and then Evan should speak. Um, so by statute, I, I mean, I'm wondering if this is what you're referring to, that that's by statute, select boards have the ability to reject yes, a yes. petition. If, But my understanding is that if the petition is frivolous or if the petition is um, not, not a serious petition. So I would want to hear from Dan Richardson um, specifically on this opinion because I wouldn't be surprised if we were presented with a petition in the near future and um, may need to put it on the November ballot. And does the select board have a choice 
in in favoring one over the other. I would want an ironclad legal opinion on that. Yep. Yep. Evan, sorry, we ha it's hard to see your hand waving way back there. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I have to keep some social distance from Greg. Uh, <laughs> so the word frivolous, it, it, there's a thing that if the select board can keep something off of a ballot, if it is not in your purview of, of your authority. So like if you wanted to give voting rights to somebody who's not eligible by state statute or by the federal government, that's something you don't have the right to do. Therefore, if the citizens came to you and said, we want to do this, you could say, we are not going to put it on the ballot because that's not in our purview. Um, there's a thing called, uh, well, there's the, notion of incompatibility and so that would be if the town and the village were putting something on the agenda on the ballot and somebody wanted to put something that is directly opposite of that they might the state might give you preference as the government to put your item on the ballot and your item only up or down and then the others would be incompatible and confusing that is something that our attorney would have to do more research and get some um, feeling or direction from government ops as to how they look at something like that as well. But I do believe that I uh, I could get Dan Richardson working on that starting tomorrow morning. I, I personally would very much like to hear that. I'm not sure about the other board members, but I would like to hear that opinion. Yes, that'd be great. So from the sounds of it, it sounds like we have a general plan as to how we're going to move forward with this conversation or for this effort. Um, I just know as to the questions that I think I heard from the, the various board members. Um, Unless there's anything I'm missing, uh, are we ready to move on? Well, move uh, on we to what, Andrew? Public comments, maybe? Right, yeah. If we don't have any further business, I would, I would like to more mm -hmm. succinctly list what we're going to do next and then have public comment. So what I think I've heard from the board is that what we're going to do is we're going to review the draft charter. We're going to continue with the process of moving forward, assuming that we're going to have a vote in November, that we can call at any, we can decide to uh, not move forward at any future time we come together. Um, whether that be we wait until the fifth member comes on, uh, well, I'm just saying that it sounds like we wait until the fifth select board member comes on, uh, we can call at that point in time. Um, but until then, we can go our separate ways. We can review the charter. Uh, when we are done um, with our boards figuring out what charter we would like to see, then we come back together for a joint meeting and we go through those details. Um, and then when I was referring to the questions, um, some notes that I had in terms of the questions that I heard are, uh, what is the impact on the staff with the delays um, and some specific time frames around that. Um, there are some questions about the district specifics, which I believe are addressed within um, the transition uh, portions of the charter as they exist, but that might be something that we need to further discuss um, together. Uh, there were some questions about creating an independent uh, committee, um, a reinforcement committee, uh, questions about how long can tax increases be delayed, uh, and those were the, the notes that I had for questions. Um, I'm assuming I see Greg writing feverishly, uh, and I tend to defer to his writing that if I miss anything, he's usually good at saying, hey, Andrew, don't forget about these other eight things. Um, that's the path that I believe I've heard. And I wonder if board members, now that we have the draft charter and we've had this conversation, if we could all make it our homework to read the charter very thoroughly and take very, very good notes about what our questions are so that when we gather with our respective boards, we can make sure we're answering them amongst ourselves and deciding whether that's something that rises to the level of a joint meeting and we need to discuss it jointly. I think so. And George, I see your hand up, but if you can just hang on a quick second. Yeah. Um, from a time frame of how we're going to do this, I'm assuming that 
we're not going to be able to get that done for our next scheduled joint meeting, which is in two weeks, and that we're going to need some time to do that. Um, and so this may require additional meetings um, or an additional meeting, one or two on top of what we already have scheduled to get this done um, and additional separate meetings. Uh, so just pointing out that again, um, this is going to cause staff to have a couple of additional nights, um, a couple of additional packets, and so in relation to how uh, the impacts on staff, I just want to make a, a very clear point that this is one of those impacts. Yeah. Uh, but George, you had a question? No, I don't have a question. I, 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 what, by proportionality and what you just said in, in your summary of the work to be done, you meant the if we have two voting wards, a village and a town voting ward, and, and how we're going to handle the proportionality of the population. Is that what you're referring to? Um, what I was referring to is, uh, I don't remember who it was. It may have been Vince talking about um, can there be can there be an apportionment committee created? So yeah. one in which. Yeah. Yeah. Can I address that? We, we addressed that in the transition charter already. And what we did was we gave the board wide latitude. The new board would have total latitude to at any time uh, appoint a committee to do uh, reapportionment and study um, the voting, uh, uh, voting wards and the populations. So, I mean, I, unless you want something more specific, but it, it seemed to me that, that broader is better so, in other words, if the, if the charter is passed, uh, the new board, after they there's a transition period, which has to be there, we, as we discovered, um, and then after that happens, uh, the new board would have uh, pretty much complete autonomy at any time to appoint a, a, an, a, an apportionment committee to study the populations of the wards and, and readjust borders and so forth. I, I just want to clarify that's you can do that in a merged community because there's no longer a chartered border of the village of Essex Junction. So it would be flexible. The problem is if you maintain two separate charters, have two separate communities, the fit the border of Essex Junction is fixed. The, the town would have no authority to adjust the village's border. That's why uh, that kind of reapportionment works in a in a in a merged community, but not under the, the present circumstances. I want to just clarify that. I hope everyone's clear on that. Thank you. Yeah. And I see Andy has a hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about the, um, I, I, I made the recommendation, but I want I don't want it to drag on if, you know, if, if we're really trying to get this done in the next, uh, you know, four or six weeks, the question of uh, getting questions answered. Um, you know, uh, can we somehow have a clearinghouse of questions that, that then we can, instead of asking the questions in a meeting, send them ahead of time and try to get answers for them for the meeting um, so that we're not, we're not just ask, raising a lot of questions and not making any progress in our meetings. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know that's staff time. I know that's potentially Dan Richardson time, which we pay for. Um, but I'd, I'd really like us to, if we're if we're going to do go down this path that we and, and try to get to November, um, that we don't run into information roadblocks if we can avoid it. I would be happy to collect the questions of the select board, and then Andrew, if you want to collect the questions of the trustees, and we can compile them and get them to Dan and get one answer. Or, or go through and find the answers we can find and pull out the ones we can't and get those to Dan. It shouldn't be many. And I would assume that in terms of a turnaround time, we really need those questions by the end of this week. Probably. That is a question. Yeah. End of the weekend, perhaps, maybe next Monday. Yeah, yeah. the weekend. We well, good to have the weekends. Thank you. We all know what we're doing for the weekend. Okay. So our homework is all board members read the charter, get your questions and send them to your chair by Monday morning, nine o'clock. Perfect. So I think unless there's anything else, are the board set at this point? with the discussion and ready to uh, turn it over for comments.
Okay. Shall Andrew, we take would you like me to do the do the public participation again? Did fantastic last time. How about it? <laughs> okay. So um, again, we'll, we will open the meeting to the public for comment. If you'd like to speak, please indicate so in the chat. Raise your hand if you like, but the chat would be probably the best. And don't forget to state your name. I see Dennis waving his hand. Go for it, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, while you were doing all this discussion about the charter and the uh, the draft for the uh, merged municipal, I looked down at section 106 where it said that uh, it's written in there that uh, three members from the the village and three members from the town outside the village will be part of the select board. Is that correct? Yeah, we had put three three in there after the results of the of the March vote. Okay, but uh, I seem that doesn't seem to be, uh, uh, shall I say you don't have consensus on that from uh, both boards, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody wants to have three plus three plus one or two, two plus three. Um, you know, as a, as a taxpayer and a, a voter, I feel I, that, um, that I, I, I uh, you should stick with what, what's there, you know what I mean, and listen to the town people that, that listen to the, both the town people and the village people that have voted for the three plus three. That's all I got to say right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Next up is Irene. Hi there. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, Pat Murray had mentioned that he'd like to resolve some inequities, so I would advise you to look closely for the first time, perhaps, at Separate and Share, which would allow the town outside the village to pay for their own fire department and their own library, would allow the village to pay for their own fire department and their own library, and I think it would resolve a lot of the inequities that frustrate people and would allow those things to be, man to be managed separately and yet not force a merger per se on everyone who's a little weary of these backdoor mergers when they're not merging and uh, <laughs> these votes that go down, but somehow keep being brought up. Um, that's my first part of my comment. I also wanted to mention that um, contrary to what George said, no one is throwing a duly elected select board member off of a board. As you may re recall from the three plus three proposal, we're not reducing the select board at all. So no one's losing a seat, we're merely adding a seat. So a new member would be added next March when we have a single select board member's term expiring. So it actually works out really well for the government ops committee to look at this this summer. Also, um, if anyone watched the government operations committee meeting on, March, on May 7th, you may have noticed that there were somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes spent talking about Essex and our charter change. They may have spent 10 or 15 seconds talking about the even numbered board. It was not a prominent part of the conversation. So um, however that got in the letter is beyond me, but it's very curious. Uh, I think there's a reason that the government operations committee repeated the talking points that you had, George. And um, we all know from the public record that Lori Houghton talked to at least one person on the government operations committee between January and February of this year. So it's no coincidence as usual why there's certain things that keep coming up, even though they may be red herrings in the minds of the people who support this. That's where I'll stop for now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I thought I saw Raj raise his hand. I actually had a question for um, Irene, but I'm not going to make this a back and forth. I can reach out to her separately. Thanks. Thanks, Raj. Anyone else from the public? Uh, did I see, I saw a hand just a second ago. Ken. Yes, thank you so much. Um, there is a transition plan for the three plus three. I've heard somebody say, I can't remember who, that there wasn't. There certainly is. It's built right, and we said this at the public hearing. Um, I don't know why it keeps on getting left behind, but there was and there is. The way it works is very simple. Initially, a new vacant seat is created filled along with the single seat that expires. Those would be two district seats, the first two. 
The other four members would stay unchanged. That's what the charter requires, and they would stay. Their terms would not be changed. A year from the first election, those two expire. The next two expire, I should say. They will be filled by election from their corresponding unrepresented districts so that it stays three plus three. They two, those two become district seats. And then the third year, same thing happens. So it takes three years for the transition to fill in, but it's right there in the charter. There's no extra transition language required. And I explained this already at least twice before. Um, I'm going to also double down on what Irene said. I, was, I watched the May 7th meeting of the Governance Operations Committee. It ended with, we have questions. It did not end with even a tabling. The letter that was sent was sent without the knowledge of any of the other members of the committee. I just got off the phone with one of the committee members and he explained to me that um, this is a problem. And by a, no stretch of the imagination is it dead. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. Is there, oh, hang on. Uh, has, does anyone else want to speak who hasn't spoken already? Hang on. Uh, Sam Stoltz. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Uh, okay. Sorry, this is the first time I'm using this. This is interesting. Um, um, so I just wanted to express my support for a three, three, one. I think it's important to have one at large. Um, and I also would disagree with a separate but share because that doesn't address any tax inequity. And thirdly, um, I believe very strongly that both sides, if we're gonna pick sides, um, need to give up some things to come together. So um, I'm hoping that with this idea of representation, if these folks that I've been listening to arguing about that sort of get that resolved i just hope that we're not going to then hear of something else that's going to become an issue and prolong things again and again it just feels kind of fishy to me all these years that in 2006 it was oh wait let's let's stop and do things incrementally that's the problem and so you all did that and actually, it was mostly town outside the village representatives on the select port at all those years. And we did that. Things went very slowly, like people from the town outside the village asked for. But now that's not enough. So I just don't understand. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of give and take here and a lot of take, take, take. And we want, we want, we want. And I'm getting very tired of that. So I'm happy to give up some things for sure. Um, but I think the other side needs to work cooperatively if we're going to be one community. And I'd really like to be one community. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? OK, I'm going back to the chat now. Okay, Irene, it looks like you have one more comment to make. If I may, it's about the proportionality. Okay. Um, in recent weeks, we've heard about court cases that insist on one person, one vote. I couldn't be happier with them because that's exactly what the three plus three or any even numbered board does. And in fact, that's what our school board has done for the past three years. And I applaud the fact that they have four plus four people representing the town of Essex within the school district. And I cannot see why we wouldn't want to align our municipal board with our school district board. Nothing makes more sense to me than that. What I do have a problem with portionality wise is having these joint meetings in which there are eight village residents around a table, a virtual table at the moment, 
and only two from outside the village. To me, there's nothing more illegal than what we're doing right now is talking about putting a merger vote on a ballot in November without having equal teams around the table. So if anyone wants to read me the Riot Act about court cases and one person, one vote, go for it. But right now, as far as I'm concerned, you are highly illegal. Thank you. Considering that the select board is entirely at large, we're not illegal. Does anybody else have any comments? George, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I would just, since since there's uncertainty and contention around what this, whether the, the government ops committee liked the 3-3 three, three vote or not, we have clearly, obviously, we have wildly different interpretations. Um, and, uh, and you are going to ask Dan Richardson a question. I think we've got a couple of questions for him already. I think it might be valuable it, it, to ask him what he ask him his opinion. He's someone who, who is an expert in municipal law. He is supposed to be a you know a, a, a legislate a legislative whisperer. He's supposed to understand what happens and what you know what they say and what they really mean by what they say. And I think that um, it would be valuable, at least for us on the board. It probably won't satisfy some proponents in the public, but I think it'd be valuable for us on the board. Um, for him to provide his interpretation of whether he thinks if we sent another 3-3 charter, if we create a charter and we keep the 3-3 um, structure in there and we send it down, is it going to come bouncing back to us? Uh, I would like to get his opinion on that because I think he's going to say, yes, that's the case. It would come They would either fix it for us and give us a seven-member board or a five-member board, or they'll send it back to us. But I think it would be valuable to hear Dan's opinion on that and a real clear opinion, just just since we're going to be asking him questions anyway. That's a great idea. Okay. Pat, did you have your hand up? I did, but it was actually summed up incredibly succinctly by George there, which is that I think we should get a definitive opinion on the 3 3. I mean, I'm reading through the letter right now, it seems pretty definitive to me. But if we need a lawyer to tell us that as well, then I'm happy to do so. Um, I, one thing that I will make a note of is that the chair of the Essex Westford School District, in fact, wrote a letter to the Essex reporter suggesting that we do not follow an even number board. Um, the school district had to do it because of the proportionality rules of their populations, including Westford in it but at least uh, it was not the first choice as far as the exact number of peoples. Um, I'm not sure why in particular that it was allowed, but if the chair of the school district doesn't think that an even number board is something to emulate, then, and having been on that board for three years myself, I also don't think even number boards are a good idea. Um, and I've brought it up during school board meetings as well. It's something that I believe they're going to be looking at um, in the coming months. All right. So I think we have next steps. I think we're good to go. Does that bring us onto the consent agenda? I think that brings us onto the consent agenda. Like board, you've, uh, no offense in the past, you've, um, it's been a little while since you've debated minutes, um, but uh, if you wanted to go ahead and start off with that in case you had changes that we may not have caught. Thank you, Andrew. Would anyone from the select board like to move the consent agenda? I move uh, approval. Ah, uh, we're both the same. Uh, Sorry, go for it, Andy. All right, I move part. approval. I remove, uh, move that the select board approve the consent agenda. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 You're welcome, Andrew. That was easy. <laughs> Trustees, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. That sounded like George. Uh, who seconds sure. it? Dan, you got the second. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? There we go. We do not, or we have the, uh, the reading file. Um, trustees, any board member comments?
Doesn't seem like any comments from the trustees. And select board, Pat. Uh, yep, I do have one comment, um, not specific to the reading file, but since the trustees are here as well, um, I thought it would be a good time to bring it up. Um, it, it was specifically in regards to an email I sent to you about a week ago, Evan. Um, I was asking about the 4th of July uh, celebration and whether or not EJRP was going to be putting it on or not, because I saw that a citizen had uh, started planning a parade through town. Um, it has since come to my attention that there have been accusations sent to me that I'm trying to get the parade shut down. Um, <laughs> I, I sent a single email um, one week ago asking whether or not EJRP had canceled because I saw that a parade had been scheduled. Um, so since it was out there in the community, I wanted to clarify exactly what I sent to Evan. Um, and also, since it's you know, happening within the community itself, at least bring it up to the boards to, um, you know, see if we have some sort of idea of what's going on for the 4th of July. I can address that. So I've had some conversations with Brad Luck and the chief of police. While it has not been officially announced, we are looking to not have 4th of July fireworks because of the size of the crowd. Um, and the ability to social distance, plus the governor's orders uh, not to have special events. Um, so uh, that that is coming out shortly, uh, albeit very close because 4th of July is right around the corner. But there, there will not be. It has nothing to do with a certain business person's desire to have another car parade or anything else. We cannot control. Um, the crowd uh, and people will certainly want to come and it's against the governor's orders um, and it does not look since he's currently at 25 uh, people in the gathering he is suddenly going to get to four or five thousand so um, that announcement is coming out very shortly thanks for bringing that up pat i and Evan, thank you for letting us know. I agree completely. We should not be doing anything like that at all. Yeah, thanks, Evan. I appreciate the clarification. Uh, anything else, Select Board? Nope. All right. Well, without further ado. Oh, sorry. Personal fireworks are still not appropriate. So. Even though we're not having a fireworks display, they're still not legal uh, for the citizens. Right, Just you have to have a permit to do fireworks. Right. Uh, all right, well, if there's no further business, then um, thank you, trustees, for another excellent meeting. And um, I will take a motion to adjourn from the select board. I move the select board adjourns. Uh, second. Thank you, Vince and Pat. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Evan and Greg, thank you again. Thank you. And thank Sarah you. and Tammy. Trustees, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Amber. Is there a second? Oh, come on. doesn't take this long. Normally, what's going on? Seriously, guys? <laughs> oh, a second. I think I heard Dan second it. All right, so we have a motion on the table to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, staff. Thank you, select board. Thank you, public.